A day that feels more like mid-November than mid-October. It's for the hearty souls of Iowa, though, at Kinnick Stadium. They fill it up, and they're making noise already because the number 23 team in the country is visiting the Buckeyes of Ohio State against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. You know, the last time Iowa was able to beat Ohio State on their home field here, their quarterback, Drew Tate, wasn't born. That's part of the problem for these two teams right now. They've got young quarterbacks, a couple of sophomores in Justin Zwick for Ohio State, Drew Tate for Iowa. But the winning streak at home for Iowa is 15 games. So we'll have to see if that comes into play today. And, Bob, when you talk about young quarterbacks, you talk about the opposition licking their chops a little bit. We're going to see some defense today. Yeah, and both of these, def both of the quarterbacks are struggling. you got uh, outstanding defenses and a lot of good linebackers. A.J. Hawk for Ohio State is a special player. He's a difference maker. He leads the conference in tackles they get their top cornerback also Dustin Fox comes back from a broken forearm he may be one of the best defensive backs in the conference and on the other side of things Kirk Ferentz has a pretty good defense in his own right a lot of experience on their side of the ball not only with their linebackers but starting up front with a guy I love watching to play and that's Matt Roth Matt Roth the defensive end is a throwback uh, he uh, he's one of the top defensive uh, players in the history of uh, Iowa he's uh, in the sacks he's uh, I think he's third but the other two are the linebackers Greenway and Hodge Hodge last year led the conference in tackles these three will have a big uh, play in this game last year this game didn't have any offensive touchdowns so the defenses are going to come into play and that means special teams will as well and you know Mike Nugent is one of the best kickers in the country keep that in mind time to warm up the fans we'll go down to Lynn Swan on the field when we come back then we'll kick it off between the Hawkeyes and the Buckeyes here in Iowa City. Welcome back to Connect Stadium. These two offenses are struggling, but one player, Santonio Holmes for Ohio State, has the talent and ability to be the catalyst to get something started. Look at what he's done in the first two games of the season compared to the last three games. What's happened to him is he's getting double coverage. Teams are paying a lot of attention to him. He has to overcome that, understand that, make some big plays for the Buckeyes, at least open up opportunities for the other two receivers and Childress and Jen. He could be the match, the gasoline on the fire that could ignite the Ohio State Buckeyes. Grant? All right, Swanee, stay warm down there, partner. Ohio State won the toss. They deferred. That's Ed Hinkle. He and Walter Bellis are back deep as Mike Nugent kicks it off, and we're underway. High short kick. Hinkle has to run up on it at the 14-yard line. And got across the 25 and out close to the 28. That's where Iowa will go to work offensively. And that means Drew Tate, the guy we touched on, just a sophomore, but a gutty kid out of Texas, undersized, but he'll show some flashes. He's coming off his best game ever last week, actually two weeks ago. They had last week off, but in their most recent win over Michigan State, he threw for 340 yards. Exactly. In his last two ball games, he's averaged over 300 passing yards per game. Marcus Simmons is a tailback. The fourth one of the year for Iowa. Tate comes up throwing on first down. Zips it out and it's Hinkle and he's got it. He's got a first down out to the 42 yard line. Nice first play for Iowa as we take a look at the starting lineups. And up front, here's the big eaters in front of Tate. Gray and Jones, Elgin, Ryan Ferentz playing guard this year and Pete McMahon, their big right tackle. Simmons the tailback behind Mickens the fullback Tony Jackson's a tight end and Holloway and Hinkle the wide receivers we've already seen Hinkle touch it twice on a kick return and most recently that first down pass mm -hmm. Tate to throw again Hinkle again in Ohio State territory at the 45 yard line so Iowa attacking Ohio State's defense on the first two plays of the ball game here's how the Buckeyes look up front Frazier and Green, Pitcock and Jay Richardson. The linebackers we touched on how good Hawk is. Schlegel in there now in the middle and Bobby Carpenter with a ton of speed. And the secondary has been pushed already by Iowa. Underwood, Whitner, Sally and Dustin Fox back in there, their defensive captain. Mark Snyder, the coordinator, happy to have number 37 back out there. He and Frazier, the only two senior starters on defense. Tate almost fell down. Comes up throwing and a man wide open. And he just overshot Clinton Solomon. And he had him too. He had him open. Iowa opening the game with three straight passing plays. Not a bad idea when you're 109th <laughs> in the nation rushing the football. And you're without your top three running backs. Simmons, we mentioned, the junior probably wouldn't even have played this year. There One, he is, number 33. Wasn't even on the depth chart. 
They lost three tailbacks in the first five weeks of the season. Week one, week two, and then a week and a half ago. So he's the man now. A physical runner. Let's see if he touches it here. Nope, take the throw again. He will touch it on a swing pass. Hit and dives forward to about the 41 yard line. Simmons knocked off his pins by E.J. Underwood. I don't think any coach would want to go through what Kirk Ferentz has done this year. Marcus Schnorr, the starter, knee injury, game one. Albert Young, starter, knee injury, game two. A week and a half ago, Jermell Lewis, the starter, knee injury, and out for the year. And a lot of times a team can overcome an injury or two, but not to the same position. When you go three deep at one position, they're playing their fourth running back. High snap on the shotgun tape, flips it out. Nice open field tackle at the 40 as Aaron Mickens is hit by Dustin Fox. So there's the impact that guy makes. And look at Dustin's forearms. And Bob, <laughs> you and I talked about this in the pregame. He doesn't want Iowa to know which arm was broken, yeah. so he's wearing exactly the same straps and sweatbands on both arms. Yeah, he's got a protective uh, cast under under one of them. And, we won't uh, tell you which one. No, and <laughs> you might be able to tell from the thickness of it, but right. I'm sure he tried to make the thickness the same on both of them. That's Antonio Holmes, who Swanee talked about just minutes ago. He's back there with Ted Ginn, the extremely fast freshman in punt return formation. Bradley puts it up, wants to keep it out of both of their hands, and does, but unfortunately kicked it about three yards too far in the end zone, a 39-yard punt, and they'll bring it out to the 20. So that's where the other sophomore quarterback will go to work, and that's Justin Zwick. 6'4", 225 pounder. There's his numbers so far on the year. He's had some high moments and he's had some games that weren't so good. But the difference a year makes. Last year they were hollering for him at times, and now they're hollering for the backup. <laughs> <laughs> Troy Smith, and we might see Troy Smith some today. But, but he has not had the benefit of the offensive line and the running backs that some of the past quarterbacks have had. Zwick's last two games, he has not completed half his passes, including the loss to Wisconsin that they're coming off of. Remember, they never lost two in a row under Jim Trestle. They haven't started an 0-3 Big Ten season since 1988. And here's Lado Ross, and he has stopped for no game. Chad Greenway made the tackle offensively for the Buckeyes. The big eaters up front are Sims and Daddish mangled at center knee and Kirk Barton making his first start the freshman out of Maslin Ohio Ross you just saw him carry it behind Brandon Joe the fullback Hamby's a tight end and Holmes and Childress two of about five receivers you'll see at times today for the Buckeyes. So it's second down and ten for Ohio State on their opening drive of the ball game. Out of the shotgun. Zwick. Quick drop throw to Holmes, and Holmes has got a first down. So they find their favorite receiver, Santonio Holmes, a first down out to the 32 yard line against the Hawkeyes defense. Up front is Robinson, Lubke, Babineau, and Roth. That's a good front four. The linebackers, Bob talked about two of them. Lewis starts at the other outside backer, Hodge and Greenway, two all Big Ten performers. And the secondary is Javon Johnson and Antoine Allen on the corners, Miguel Merrick and Marcus Pascal on the safety. A physical defense, good against the run, not so good against the pass. Here's a guy I like watching. Play. You like watching line play. Watch number 31. First and 10. Ross broke a tackle and then ran into a swarm of Hawkeyes. I should say a flock of Hawkeyes. Greenway led the way to make the stop. Ohio State over the years always has had a great running attack and it's something they've always built on and they've been able to throw play action off that and they just don't have it going right now. Yeah, part, part of that history and that running back uh, just walked by the booth. Yes he did. Early, Two time Archie, Heisman winner. <laughs> Archie Griffin came by and said hello but uh, yeah he said you said you need you. He said well maybe in a different era they did <laughs> but uh, his legs aren't quite good enough for now. Second down and nine. Zwick. Steps up in the pocket, heat from behind, and now he's met face on by Abdul Hodge. Lutke got the initial pressure, and Hodge cleaned up. Both defensive lines, I think, today will dominate the offensive lines. They're just that good. On the left side, 31 is Matt Roth, 45 is Babino, but it's Lutke that gets around and pressures him out of the pocket. And pushes him right into number 52 right there. So now it's third and long, and this is what the Iowa defense 
and their coordinator Norm Parker were hoping for. Get a quarterback who's been struggling yeah. in a third down and eight. And they're last in the conference in third down conversions. Swing from the gun. Throws down the sideline. Incomplete. Intended for Bam Childress and Javon Johnson was right there with it. Okay, offensively, don't get excited. You know, we didn't throw an interception and we didn't turn it over. You're on the road and uh, you, you got uh, your juices flowing. Let's punt the ball and come back and play again. One area that Jim Tressel obviously is not as good at as a year ago is this spot, too. Not taking anything from Kyle Toronto, but B.J. Sander won the Ray Guy Award last year. and He was a big part of the win over Iowa. And that's what I'm talking about. Off the side of his foot and hops dead at about the 37 yard line. Not a good kick. I will have good field position offensively as the sun comes out in Iowa City. We haven't seen it in three days. It's going to be balmy by the time we come back from this time out. <laughs> Get into the game now with Enhanced TV at ESPN.com and interact for your chance to win a premium SUV. Head coach in his sixth year at Iowa, Kirk Ferentz. Good coach. His team has passed five times and hasn't run it yet. We'll see if they do here on their second possession at their own 38-yard line. Chandler, the H-back, is in motion. And they play fake it and take the throw again. Low throw, but caught. And out for about a seven yard gain to Warren Holloway. Well, Kurt Ferentz talked with us about the fact that when you're down to your fourth tailback, you know you're going to put the ball in the air. Our goal is to be balanced. Uh, it always has been from day one. And, uh, but it, it's tough. You have to, to go with what you can go with. Uh, you know, we've had some problems with the offensive line injury wise and then the running back situation. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have to try to try to just uh, find a blend that's going to work for us. Uh, Drew has thrown the ball pretty well at times. And, and uh, but I, I know this too. It's easier on a quarterback if you can rely on the run game as well. It's been all Drew Tate so far. Six times. Here comes number seven. Nice play fake. Rolls and throws on the run and caught inside the 35 down to the 34 as he found his six foot three inch wide out Clinton Solomon. And you know what? I know it's early in the game, but I watched Drew Tate and he reminds me a little bit of another Drew we know and love, Drew yeah, Brees. That's exactly right, Drew Brees. This is a nice job of patience by the quarterback. Solomon, the outside receiver, just going to hang around now. He's not open right now, but the longer. The longer Tate ran to the sideline, the better angle he got to, to throw the ball to Solomon. Nice job of patience by the quarterback outside the pocket. Five different receivers already that he's utilized. Seven straight passes. From the 33, they finally run it. And they got down to the 30, a pickup of about three for Marcus Simmons. Running behind Mike Elgin as center. A.J. Hawk made the tackle. And when you do that, if you throw on, on running downs early, it helps the quarterback. It helps the protection. It helps the offensive line. And then when you do throw seven times in a row, then you finally run one. Then it helps the running game. So, so there, you, you're being a little bit underpredictable in your play calling. Down to the 30 with a second down and seven. <laughs> the wide out screen and Solomon dropped it. Had a blocker out there that was going to lead the way. Lee Gray, the big left tackle, he just forgot to take the ball along. Well, the pass was a little bit high. Yep. Drew Tate tried to get it out there to him a little bit too quickly. He wanted to do the fake and then get it out there. He just That's something a young quarterback, those types of mistakes you'll make. When you're a fourth or a fifth-year senior, you know, you know you've got to hurry, but you've got to go through your, your, your reads and your fakes and then get him the football. Next year, when this guy comes back, it'll be the first time in six years Kirk Ferentz has had a quarterback come back and play more than one year. He's always had seniors. So Tate is the fifth starting quarterback for Iowa in the last five years. Here he comes under a blitz. Stands in. Fires to Hinko. Hinko's got it inside the 15. Now the 12. The ball's loose. Ohio State's got it. A.J. Hawk. Ball hawking again. Ball was caught a little bit high. I couldn't tell whether it came out before he hit the ground or not. This play will be reviewed by the uh, by the uh, Big Ten. There's Hinkle. He made the catch. Yeah, it's out. I think it's out. I think it's out before his knee was down. Let's check it again. 
Yeah. I don't know. Gil Marchman is our yeah. video coordinator over to our left, the official in the booth, if you will. Let's keep uh, checking this out now. If Ohio State were smart, they would rush onto the field. And the linesman's just stopped play here, and the referee as well. Here's another look from another angle. Ball, where's the knee? Oh boy, oh, that, that is, is tight. That is very close. Whitner's the guy number nine that made the hit, Dante if, Whitner. If his knee is down and he still has Iowa, possession. Their first timeout. Well, well, that was going to take a timeout yeah. to see if exactly. the review will start here. To give him time to look at it. And we're going to take a break as well. We'll all think about it and look at it. We'll be back in Iowa City in a minute. You can bet Kirk Ferentz didn't blow a timeout this early in the ballgame without wanting this to be reviewed, but they're not going to. There's the previous play. Hinkle, you're going to see his knee start to touch, but the ball, I think, is already coming out right there on the hit by Whitner. So it was not reviewed. It's a fumble, uh, and I it's think, Ohio State's ball. I think why it wasn't reviewed is Gil March when the technical advisor in the booth saw the replays and didn't have to review it. Exactly. But Iowa was trying to force that hand, and it didn't work. Incomplete, intended for Bam Childress, and Abdul Hodge hit him in the back, and he couldn't hold it. As we get an update in New York, here's John. Brad, try and follow this Taco Bell update. Auburn and Arkansas, Jason Campbell, the Cadillac Williams, to Courtney Taylor, flips it back to Campbell. 67 yards to Devin Aruma Shadu, who outraces all of the Razorbacks who have fooled on the play. And they've added a field goal and a 10 0 lead for the Auburn Tigers. Right. And a little Scooby Doo. <laughs> a little trickery there. A little trickery, skullduggery. Hickory dickory doo. <laughs> Four wide receivers from the shotgun. And they keep it on the ground in the draw play. And Iowa had that one all smelled out. Jonathan Babineau was the first there, along with Derek Robinson on the defensive line. One of the game plans for Ohio State coming in was to spread spread the defense of Iowa from left sideline to the right sideline and then try to open some holes and run inside. This is what they're doing. They had four wide receivers in, spread everybody out, but the defensive line is still manhandling the offensive line. So another third and long, third and 13. Four wide receivers. Childress, Holmes, Yin, and Hall. There's Wick out of the shotgun. Looking down the middle. And incomplete. Nice job defensively by Bellis as he knocked it away from Ginn. Well, that's what they wanted. They want to get the ball to Ginn, probably the fastest guy on the team. And Bellis is the nickelback. First year player, junior college guy that's just joined the Hawkeyes this year. Bellis will drop back in punt return formation now. Remember, Toronto's first punt off the side of his foot only went 28 yards. Let's see if Iowa puts the heat on him here. And they almost got it. Yeah, they were after that one. High kick, and this is a good one. Bellis on the other end, and he's drilled. Boy, you can't play special teams any better than that. Great punt, and even better coverage by Welch, the freshman down to make the tackle. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Kia Motors. Kia, make every mile count. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. You saw some of the Perky Hawkeyes spread around Iowa City. There's 90 of those out there. They got some pretty creative ones. back with the Hawkeye offense on the field. They've been out there a lot more than Ohio State's has been. Schlegel made the tackle. Mike DeAndrea injured and out for the season. So Schlegel who really was pushing DeAndrea for that middle linebacker spot anyway. The junior transfer out of Air Force. Mm -hmm. Now the starting inside linebacker. He's kind of the plugger in there. And then you got A.J. Hawk and Bobby Carpenter that can run like deer. Uh, pretty good uh, core of linebackers. Yeah. DeAndrea had surgery earlier this week. Everything's fine. He should be back and playing again next year. Mike, we wish you the best with your rehab. Tape to throw. Got a man. Solomon couldn't quite hold it. Dustin Fox broke it up. Tate is throwing the ball just a little bit high. Yep. Several of his throws have been just a little bit too high for some of the receivers. Mm -hmm. 
just a little bit high at that time and a couple of the other ones. Receivers not wild about that when you're going through that secondary, especially <laughs> on inside routes. First three games compared to the last two, as I said, back to back games where he has career highs, even though this is the first year of his career. It looks like he's going to wing it a lot today, too. Back, dancing around in the pocket. Now has an open man. Great presence in the pocket to still keep his eyes downfield and get a first down throw. Good call. 12 yard pickup. Good call by my partner there, dancing around, buying some time. That's, you know, you don't teach that stuff. That's just a guy that can make plays instinctively. You got to slide around. Only a three man defensive line, so you figure you're going to have some, some extra time. The pass rush may not be as hard or as fierce if it was a four or five man rush. So they've edged back in Ohio State territory about a half yard in to Buckeye land. Tate. On the roll, gets around containment, now he'll run it himself. And out of bounds in front of the Ohio State bench, a pickup of about eight. Drew Tate coming off that good game against Michigan State, the 340-yard game, and with that, growing and gaining confidence every ball game. There's just something about me, you know, that, you know, that my brother kind of put in me and my father. You know, just knowing that I, when I go out there and I step on the field that I'm going to get the thing done no matter what. And I mean, that, I mean I'm mean, i not trying to be arrogant or anything about it, but I, I just think that my confidence is really high. And I just believe that, you know, if, I mean, if I have a chance to be out there and to get the job done, I'm going to do it. He's done it so far. Eight out of 11 and two of the passes have been dropped. I like the confidence I hear in his voice. Me too. Here's a fullback. Should have a first down. He does. Second effort, I think, at the 39-yard line. A.J. Hawk brings down Aaron Mickens. And they may or may not have to take a look at this and bring out the chains. You know, in talking, Swanee and Bob and I with Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes, yesterday, and talking about Drew Tate, he gets that little twinkle in his eye, looked at Bob, and he said, Bob, he just gets it. He sees football the way a quarterback's supposed to see it. He says he sees it differently than even I do as offensive coordinator, but he gets out there and he gets it. Right, and he's only six foot and 185 pounds, so he's not perfect. Now, you could have a guy 6'5 and 240 can throw the ball the length of the field. He would not get it. So you'd rather have Drew Tate get it than somebody else with better, better uh, physical talents that can throw the ball, can move uh, around. But give me somebody that's instinctive to play quarterback. There was about to be two guys in motion at the same time for Iowa. Tate didn't like the looks of it. He calls a timeout with 519 to go first quarter. No growing pains going on with a sophomore quarterback from Iowa right now. I'll tell you that much. Is even though they have no points, the Hawkeyes offense has been on the field most of this first quarter. And number five, a hot quarter for him. First down, Iowa just inside the Buckeyes 39 yard line. Yeah. On the ground they go. Simmons breaking tackles. Simmons might have another first down. Whitner, number nine, snuck up and came from the outside. They thought they were going to have another pass play and a nice run play up inside, and then he just bounces it right where Whitner was. So Simmons gets 11. Junior out of Davenport, Iowa, a transfer from Nebraska. And he's, as we said, the number four tailback. Well, he's the number one tailback right now. Yeah, and I like the way the game has started. They're not putting the pressure on him. Right. They've thrown the ball. Here's a wide out screen to Hinkle. Hinkle got a block from Jackson, the tight end. He held on to this ball, got down to the 23-yard line. Let's get an update on the number one team in the country. Here's John in New York. Brad with the Verizon Wireless Update. USC, as you mentioned, facing Arizona State. Matt Leinert hooks up with Reggie Bush. 10 yards on the touchdown pass as USC looking to remain unbeaten, as is Arizona State, with a 7 to nothing lead. Right. Well, two good quarterbacks going at it there, Walter and Leinert. Iowa's driven down to a second down and four at the Ohio State 23. Scoreless tie, first quarter. Simmons cut back, first down, down to the 16, maybe the 15-yard line. Boy, Iowa was worried about its offense. We got a long ways to go in this yeah. game, but their offense looks pretty good. Nice job by the right side of that uh, Ferentz and McMahon. Simmons comes out limping, Bob. Yeah, watch over here is the right side. The right side of that offensive line. Look at McMahon here and Ferentz. There's a huge hole right inside. Well, now it's tailback number five. 
Sam Brownlee, a sophomore out of Emmitsburg, Iowa. And Ferentz, is this a nightmare or what? Here's a throw out complete, immediately put down at the 11-yard line. Solomon, the five-yard pickup. Dustin Fox made the stop. But again, Marcus Simmons, who had just had a nice run for a first down, on that last carry, he came out of the pile just when Bob was showing you the replay and limped over to the Iowa sideline. And offensively, you just got to say, all right, whoever comes in and at running back is just going to hold up the job. We're not asking him to carry us. Just, just block, run, hold on to the ball. You know, whatever we need, just, just fill in a little bit. Hey, you're good. You're Leave good. the fullback Mickens in there as a single setback. Fake it to him, and now Tate throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa. Solomon's been his favorite target, and he just threw it 11 yards for a score. Boy, Drew Tate doing the job in the first quarter. That's that's the first offensive touchdown in this game in, in two years. <laughs> Uh, now the extra point. Schlicker in the kick. And it's up and wobbles it through. 7-0. Iowa. And watch Tate again. There it is here. The inside receiver is just going to go down and break to the outside. But the key to the whole thing is the quarterback getting outside the pocket with time to throw. Right now. Now he's outside the pocket. He can see everything. The two receivers as a two man route. I'm going to roll towards you and I'm going to throw out there. Perfect. Bob and Brad when I was out of practice on Thursday. I think Hinkle certainly runs the best routes but the man that they were looking to get the ball to throughout that afternoon practice was number 88 Solomon. He's an impressive young kid. He's got some great abilities. Came here contributed immediately but last year without because of academics. It's been a year of the junior college came back this year with a newfound shall we say confidence and understanding of what it takes to be at Iowa and play football and he is taking advantage of it this year. Boy no doubt came in with 14 catches already today. He's been the main target including for the touchdown as Swanee said he played at Iowa Central Community College last year to get his grades in order after he had played a considerable amount as a freshman here at Iowa City. And now appreciating the return and I think appreciating Drew Tate's quarterbacking skills. Yeah, and, and good balance on that drive. Five runs, five passes. And Tate was four out of five throwing it on that drive. Santonio Holmes and Maurice Hall await the kick now of Schlicker, who's going to have to have a holder out there because the wind is picked up. And a high short kick. He's kicking into the wind. At the 15 yard line is Hall. Ball, the tailback, the number two tailback, out to the 24-yard line. That's where Ohio State will work. Coming up on Monday nights, we turn to pro football. Al Michaels and John Madden will be in St. Louis, another edition of Monday Night Football. John Gruden leading the Bucks against Mark Bulger, Marshall Falk, and the high-powered Rams. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. And the youngster. The second generation Greasy, the professorial <laughs> one, throwing long to his tight end. Brian Greasy, the winning quarterback last week for Tampa against the Rams on Monday Night Football. The kid played pretty darn well. I watched most of that one last Sunday. Yeah, I did. I caught him and told him he did a pretty good job. <laughs> At the 24, Justin Zwick back to throw. In trouble, flushed and knocked down after about a three-yard scramble by Ludke. And speaking of the Monday night games, the battle of Greasy's and how times have changed. Still looking for a Super Bowl ring is number eight. Oh, <laughs> national titles won on the Michigan side. It's large signing bonus. He got you on that one, I think. He did. Yeah. His, uh, his bank account is much higher than mine. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I didn't know that one was coming. You guys are sneaking around down there in the truck. Yeah. Second down at seven. Pittman now in at tailback for Ohio State. He'll get the call and he'll get a rude awakening. He lost a yard. Babino and Ludke, the two defensive tackles, said hello to the freshman out of Akron, Ohio. 
We talked about that front seven. They're doing the job right now. They are. Babineau, 45, gets his way in there. Lupke, number 60, doing a great job. Lupke came, he was a high school All-State swimmer. <laughs> you tell me a defensive lineman is a swimmer? It just doesn't compute. I can understand if they're a wrestler like Roth was in high school. He was about 210 when he was a swimmer. He ain't 210 anymore. <laughs> He says, yeah, I packed down about 70 pounds. He's got that swim move down that uh -huh. the defensive lineman <laughs> like sure. to use. He can still flip turn, too. Yeah. Third and eight. Down the middle, incomplete. Zwick was pressured, intended the pass for Ted Ginn. And Matt Roth got some heat on the quarterback. Well, that's the key. Zwick looks like he's yeah, coming off, holding his uh, right arm or something. But... Uh, Pressure was on him, not time to look, and uh, three and out. Second straight three and out. Remember, they almost got to the last point. I think they've got the return set up here as Toronto's back and will kick it from his own 15, and he got another dandy. Bellis at the 21. Coming the other way, out across the 30, got about 13 on the return. And Iowa will have decent field position again. Remember last time they went 61 yards on a touchdown drive. That's where we are right now. The Hawkeyes lead by seven. Kirk Ferentz first year here. He was one and 10, 0 and 8 in the Big Ten. Three years later, they're co-Big Ten champions and on their way to a BCS Bowl. It's a job he's done here. National Coach of the Year in 02. Yep. Brownlee, the tailback. Has not played much, gets the call, got about a yard. Simon Frazier wrapped him up. Hurt Ference, always his offensive lines, be it as a college coach or when he was in the pros, always great. And this year, still kind of searching. And Swanee said, you finally have your same line two weeks in a row. That's his son, Brian Ference, who a year ago was the center for this team. Suffered a knee injury and then they went in to clean the knee up and it locked up on him back in March and he got a staph infection in the knee and it became so bad that as his dad almost tearfully said to us the other day we didn't know if we were going to save the knee or not so Brian has really battled back to at this point in the season be a starter now at guard so he's had to go through some tough times and you yeah, could yes. tell talking to Kirk yesterday it wasn't about coach and player anymore no it wasn't it was uh, and I and I know that look it was like father and son. It was like, uh, so what if you don't play football anymore, yeah. son? At least uh, you'll be able to hold your kid when you're 40. But it, uh, it got touch and go there for a while. And he said, Brian handled it a lot better than his mom and I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a third down and seven coming up. Jim Tressel is out on the field, and timeout's been taken by Ohio State. And coach is coming all the way out to talk to the ref right in our picture, which doesn't happen very often. Thank you to Andy for convenience. I don't know whether you said he was juggling the football or maybe he said it was a fumble. Maybe he thinks it was a fumble. So Ohio State uses it first time out. Dick Honig is our referee. Six seconds remaining in the quarter. And the quarter will change and the wind will change shortly. One more play as we take another look. That looks pretty close. Um, see, he recovered it. If, if it were a fumble and he did recover it, it's like... It's like a, I think they're ruling that it was a catch and he recovered his own fumble. Right. Which would mean it's a loss of um, four yards from where he initially caught the ball. And that's why it's still third down and seven. And now the referee stops play again. Now it's going to be under review, I'm sure. Being reviewed. All right. So the booth next to us will have a look at this. Bob and Brad, it's kind of interesting with the Big Ten using replay for the first time. You know, the, the rules are fairly simple in terms of when it can be used, but.
but the interesting point is both coaches taking timeouts to kind of push the issue, right. making sure that the replay official upstairs, the technical advisor, is getting a longer look at things, maybe in their favor to review it. And of course, in this particular ball game, it did not work for Kirk Ferentz as they did not review the first one. Right. But for Tressel, it's, pay, it's paying off. Remember, yeah. only only the technical advisor in the booth can initiate a replay to start with. But it's no big deal. I mean, this is no big deal because it's either incomplete or he fumbled it and it's third and. You that's know. right. There was no change of possession, right. and if the same team does keep possession, it's a matter of three or four yards. Yeah. What's the big deal? Yeah. There you go. There you are. You got it fixed. Okay. Replay being used for the first time in an experimental form by the Big Ten, and a lot of other conferences have told us and coaches we hope it works because we'd like to see it in our conference as well. I mentioned the technical advisor, and we mentioned earlier uh, Gil Marchman's over next to us. Yeah. The pagers worn by the five on field officials, and uh, obviously our referee Dick Honig already told us the play is under review. And you take a look. Uh, at the replays that you yeah. see at home there isn't a time limit although they'd like to be as judicious yeah. with that as possible the technical advisor in the booth is the one that initiates the review and Gil was a long time official yeah it's 20 years yeah. in the Big Ten and now even while things are under review they're telling us from the field that there's a little bit of a communication problem between the booth the video booth well, and the officials that are they, on the field. What they have is a walkie-talkie system, something similar to that. Yeah, and if that doesn't getting, work, they're probably getting a pizza order then, right now. Then they have a hard downtown. line. They can go to the hard line on the sideline. Coming into the day, 28 games have been played, 15 reviews and six overturns, mm -hmm. and. As Bob said, in this case, it isn't going to matter really either way. It's no big deal. I was talking to Gil Marchman, uh, the, the technical advisor, uh, and the replay uh, official before the the ball game, and and he was asking, "What's the toughest part of this job?" And he was saying, "The time element." He said, I, "If I get if I get the pictures, I can make a decision. It's just a matter of of getting it and making the decision where it doesn't slow up the ball game." Six seconds remaining in the first quarter. So in one instance here, this is holding up the game. Yes. That's just, uh, no doubt about that. I and can it's, see. The, it's the communication that's holding up the game. It's not the fact that I think the review's already been made and uh, it's over with. And now. It's the whistle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, got... now Dick Honig's whistle's all tangled up <laughs> with got... everything else. <laughs> But you know, last week we were we were uh, in the Big 12 doing Texas and Oklahoma, and talking to the officials and the coaches out there. Everybody hopes that this that this thing does go well with the Big Ten, right. and they can get it in other conferences. They've added time back to the clock, 12 seconds. Here's Dick. <laughs> well, his communication with us is just about as good as a communication with the booth. It's a windy day. That's what we'll give it to. Technical difficulties on the officials, Mike. Swatty. Well, Bob and Brad, just to give you an update, Marcus Simmons from the 33 is on the sideline. They're saying it's a left ankle sprain. They've taped it. I also noticed when they were taping it, they were trying to pad the bottom of that left foot. He's jogging, trying to move around on the sideline, but right now it's questionable as to whether or not he'll return to this ball game. And I would just say from watching him, the way he's moving around, he's probably not coming back in this first half. Swanee, check if you could while you're in that area down there. I don't think Ed Hinkle's been in for a couple plays, and I don't know if Chandler, the H-back, has played either in the last few snaps. They've got kind of a different receiving core out there, including Solomon, who caught the touchdown. I will check on it for you, Brad. All right, thanks. Sure, what that was about, but it's third down and nine. Well, we got all this fancy stuff going, but we don't, we don't, <laughs> but it ain't working good. Yeah. Well, we got everything straight on the field. There goes 10 minutes of my life, I'll never get back. <laughs> third down and nine. Let's see if the two teams have remained warm enough. Well, I was pretty warm. The running back trying to get a first down does. Sam Brownlee, a walk on. And fifth string tailback for a first down run. That's the run of his short life. As you mentioned, he's a walk on fifth stringer. He's just going to get the ball and then cut it all the way back. Look at this move right here. That's a nice move. 
And now he's fighting for the first down and gets it. Up to the 45 yard line into the quarter a good quarter for the home team trying to win their 16th straight at home Iowa leads 7 nothing. our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations you're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. He's got a man and got him inside the 30 down to the 28 this time it's Warren Holloway. Pick up of 28 right on the money. Again, it was just a hair high, but yeah. Holloway made a really nice catch. But this one, he had to throw high be, to get it over the defense. The receiver's going to come in from this side over here. Watch as he just gets the ball over the linebackers and drops it in. Receiver from our right side. Now there he is. Just drops it in over these guys. That's an excellent throw and a good time to throw it. So a first down at the 27 of Ohio State. Give again to Brownlee. Brownlee bouncing his way inside the 25 to the 24. So we get another update on top ranked USC. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. Brad, thanks a lot. USC, as you mentioned, against Arizona State. They're a little thin at wide receiver. So get the guy coming out of the backfield. Lendale White. This is a second touchdown pass from Matt Liner, both to the players coming out of the backfield and a 14 to nothing lead. Brad. All right, John, thanks. It's 7 0 here, Iowa leading Ohio State in this Big Ten matchup at Kinnick Stadium. Here comes the Ohio State Blitz. Again, off play action. Tate got around the rush. Incomplete on the throw. Jay? God damn it, Jay. Intended for Solomon again. Yeah, the whole offense is, is predicated on on that 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 getting Tate out of the uh, pocket first of all, and then that little stretch play where they give it to the uh, running back. But this is a this is good. He's getting outside, he avoided the the, uh, the defensive end, and got some uh, room to throw the football. But there was nothing downfield that time. Look at those numbers in just 16 minutes of work. Not bad. Well, they've thrown 17 passes in their first 26 plays. Champ Davis now in the backfield, flanking Tate in the shotgun. Tate looking left all the way. Broke one tackle. Not going to get away from the second one. A.J. Hawk and Mike Kudla combine on the stop. And it's going to be a loss of about four. Boy, Hawk's good, isn't he? A.J. Hawk, and he's a good one. We take a look at the criminology major. How'd you like to be in his yoga class? I'd get the, I'd get the hell out of the way if I was in his yoga class. No way. I'd give him a lot of room. He could have my mat. <laughs> Schlicker's going to come out and try a long field goal. He's got the win. Here, A.J., you want my mat? <laughs> This will be a 45 yard attempt with the win. Remember Nate Kading was a sensational kicker last year. This guy's trying to fill his shoes or his position anyway. He snaps a little wide to kick on the way and he got it. That's a big kick there. Yes it is. Kyle Slicker the sophomore with a 45 yard field goal and Iowa extends its lead with 12 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the half. Buckeyes at home out in front of the Buckeyes 10 nothing. A young girl inspires the impossible a new extreme makeover home edition ABC Sunday. Hawkeyes of Kirk Ferentz lead at home trying to win their 16th straight at Kinnick Stadium and they've got a 10 nothing lead. This is the 100th game coached by Kirk Ferentz mm -hmm. in his ninth season. He was yep. at Maine yep. before being here at Iowa. Of course was a longtime assistant under Hayden Fry here in Iowa City. So many great coaches uh, still coaching or under Coach Fry at one time. The Bill Snyders, the Barry Alvarez's, the Dan mm -hmm. McCartney's you go down, mm -hmm. down the list. Mm -hmm. Coach Fry's probably watching on the yes. game plan. Got a scratch where it itches yeah, in, there Coach. There you go, Coach. Schlicker to kick again. Out of the hole. And they got a good one here. Maurice Hall from the four. Hall breaks a tackle, got outside. Down the sideline, and might be gone. Hall inside the 30, down to the 21-yard line. I think there was a flag, and I think there was a hole to leave. 
illegal block way back upfield. But meantime, there's a fumble at the end of the play. Somebody, I thought, almost had their jersey taken off on a holding to get him to that corner. But it's a 75 yard return for now, but I think it's all coming back. Well, Brad, you're right. There is a flag on the football field. It's at about the third, 33 yard line. You can't see it there because it's because the stands are so close and the Iowa football team is so close there, to it. There's the jersey number three. That's who I thought it was and it was Ryan Hamby the tight end who just about took the jersey off yeah. the Iowa defender and the Iowa defense is back around the the 30 yard line of Ohio State so they know it's coming back. Yeah. Well, you saw a great picture of it Hamby. Is going to come into your picture right there, and that's McQuan Hawkins, a Dawkins that he mugs, and yeah. that's what got Paul to the corner. And that's too bad because that is just exactly what Ohio State needed a long, some big play to get their offense kick started, get them down there in some good field position, but now it's all for naught. That's what you would call those hidden lost yards, yes. Bob, and that was 56 of them. Oh boy. So now instead of way down on the other end, it's at your own 23. The special teams makes a play for you, but then it comes back. Zwick, play action, has time. Lofts it long for Holmes, and it was almost intercepted. Antoine Allen was the guy back covering. Remember, Ohio State had never lost two games in a row under Jim Tressel. They don't want to lose three in a row, and that causes a little problem with a head coach and his team. Anytime you face adversity, whether you're a country, uh, or you're a team, or you're a community, or you're a family, uh, or you're an individual, now you know when you're facing adversity and things that you really, you know, wish it maybe wasn't that way, but it is. I think you do find out a lot about yourself, and usually um, you find out that you're pretty good. He's a pretty good coach, that's for sure. Four national titles at Youngstown State, an NCAA BCS championship at Ohio State. <laughs> we talked to him this week and said, you know, it's a lot easier when you win all those games in a row, Jim. And he said, yeah, but you know, I've been doing this 19 years as a head coach. You just got to get ready for the next one. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing he said is a lot of these players were young players and didn't play on the championship team. And they have never gone through adversity. Right. They were always on, on going on the high road. Now they've gone through some adversity maybe that they've never gone through before. And Justin Zwick will probably have a little adversity right here because it's third down and ten. Well, the first three possessions were all three in and three punts. They need a first down right here. Flags are down. Got a flag. It's probably going to be too much time. I think so because it's the back judge. The back judge it. threw the flag and he's in charge of watching the play clock and that's the call. Now it's going to be third down and fifteen. Jim Tressel calls the offensive plays. And you see Troy Smith with the stocking cap on signaling the plays in right there number 10. He's the backup quarterback and obviously when things aren't going well the backup quarterback's the most popular guy oh, in town sure. and there's been a lot of talk about why Troy Smith's not playing around Columbus Ohio in the last week or two. But you know you got to cut the starting quarterback here some slack. You're on the road. This is not an easy place to start. You know you need some help. The offensive line is not the best that they've had there. The running game has not gone well. You know you need to cut them some slack. Third down and 15. Matt Roth and company probably like to cut him in half right here. He's going to get rid of the pass though. Short gain but not nearly enough for a first down and it'll be punting time again for the Buckeyes. Ten yard pickup but Antoine Allen makes the tackle on Roy Hall and here comes the punting unit ready to kick into the wind. He still seems to be carrying that right arm a little funny when he runs off the. Uh -huh. He's got it draped around the front of his uh, his body. Toronto, they got close on one of his punts. They'll back out of this, and he got a nice kick into the wind. Bellis from the 26. Bellis keeps his balance and got across the 40. Nice return, 16 yards out to the 42-yard line. Penalty marker back near the 40 yard line. It's a holding call uh, against 
Iowa. I hope he's working on his uh, mic. <laughs> Either that or it's truck and trailer. Or <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Number 84 on the receiving teams, 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Well, by golly, it works. <laughs> now, coming up Monday night, Al Michaels and John Matt will be in St. Louis. Monday night football. The Buccaneers coming off a win. We'll take on the high powered. St. Louis Rams, Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Richard Seymour is an expert in the art of the quarterback sack, but find out how little he knows about the receiving end when Troy Brown turns the tables on this week's edition of Monday Night Football's You've Been Sacked. Uh -huh. All right. Drew Tate has not been sacked yet today. He's been the man for Iowa. Uh, first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Here's a stretch play. And running over people again is Brownlee. Brownlee out to about the 40. And he might have a first down with the second and third effort. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Brad, I didn't want you to think that maybe you were hallucinating or not saying something that was correct. You had very good eyes when you talked about Hinkle and Chandler. Chandler got a stinger, came off the field, and then Hinkle bruised his elbow and came off the field. So they were down for most of that series, but then came back into the ball game. So good eyes, Brad. All right, partner. There's Hinkle. He's Mr. Dependable. He makes some of the greatest catches you'll ever want to see. He's more the possession guy. Solomon's been their big hitter today as a wide receiver. Tate pump fakes. Now he's going to throw it away. Smart move. Looked like he and his wide receivers were not on the same page. And Tate just decided to throw that one away. Hinkle's a guy, you get the ball anywhere near him, and he's going to make the catch. The kind of catches like this one against Iowa State. Watch him lay out in the end zone for the touchdown. And he's done it against a lot of teams, including Michigan. Watch this one in the corner of the end zone. Oh, man, something else. And he's got very small hands, but he says, I might have small hands, but you put it anywhere where I can get a finger on it, I'm going to catch it. And they tried that last play, Brad. They, that was a that stop and go. They tried to hit him deep on the corner, but he had it covered very well. He keeps bugging the equipment man in Iowa to get more medium-sized gloves. They don't carry a lot of those around a football team. <laughs> Champ Davis, another tailback. Now with Simmons having gone out with the ankle injury, Brownlee's done a nice job. The sophomore, and now it's Davis, another sophomore out of Plano, Texas. And Texas, one of the hot spots, really, for this Iowa football team. Purdue, for that matter. A lot of teams around the Big Ten get a lot of talent there. They do, and they, you know, and, and, and uh, Tate is from Texas also. Right. As was Drew Brees. As Brees was from Texas. This kid reminds me of Drew Brees, the way he's played so far today. Third down and five. Quick slant, just a little bit, and a flag goes down as they're going to say pass interference on A.J. Underwood. Well, that's going to go Iowa's way, and it'll be a first down once the call's made. Pass interference on the defense, number two. the spot of the foul which is a 44 yard line left side can't really tell anything from that right there he had his right arm yeah. around him yeah. right before the ball was he delivered holding on wasn't he yep gaining the you gained an advantage a defensive man gained an advantage by wrapping his right arm and kind of catch up with him Tate here comes a blitz from Hawk he got rid of it and again, did the wise thing to throw it out of bounds incomplete. Time for our Aflac trivia question this week here in the second quarter. Who holds the NCAA record for most, <laughs> most consecutive 100-yard rushing games? NCAA record, most consecutive 100-yard rushing games. We'll have the answer for you a little bit later on. 10-29 remaining second quarter. Kinnick Stadium. Sun's out now. It's warmed it just a little bit on this mid-October day where the fans came out early and had to bundle up. But a cold week. Tate, quick throw. Solomon immediately drops. Short gain on the play. That's just like a running play for these guys. The corners are playing off. It's a little stop route. One thing that... Uh, that you have to do to, to play in the secondary for Ohio State is be able to tackle uh, Dustin Fox Underwood all those guys you know the, the toughest position to play on the in the secondary 
or on a defense is the cornerback because you've got to cover a guy that's 4-4 and you've got to be able to be tough enough right. to come up and tackle a 250-pound running back. Third down and a long five. This is a time where you think about a guy like Hinkle maybe. Tate back to throw. Pump fakes. Wants to throw a screen. That blew up. There's going to be a holding call as he'll run for the first down and down the sideline. But this one's coming back as well. Yeah. Man coverage in the secondary. That's the reason the screen was no good. And nobody was watching him, so he just took off. And nobody was there, but holding by an offensive lineman. I think it was uh, maybe Lee Gray, the left tackle. We'll take a look. Number 70. Yeah, you There's the takedown. Yeah. Holding number 70 on the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat third down. So that backs it all the way up to the midfield stripe. Gray, a 310 pounder, another Texas native. A junior out of Dallas. You saw the graphic about the worst in the conference on protecting the quarterback. 17 sacks coming into the ball game. That's why they've been getting the quarterback out of the pocket some, rolling him out. Three man line for the Buckeyes. Third and 15. They don't bring any extra pressure here. Tate got enough pressure the way it was from the front three, and down he goes. Jay Richardson got to him. Back deep. He can't keep it out of their hands forever. This is Gin. And they don't let that speed bother him. They wrap him up. Short run back. Only an eight yard return. So good coverage by Iowa. Cody Asmus down there to make the stop on the special team. Hawkeyes lead the Buckeyes 10 0. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Chevrolets, 10 new cars and trucks in 20 months, an American revolution. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. BU, nothing's better, Dr. Pepper. TIAA Kreft, financial services for the greater good. And AOL for broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten, which is at about the 19-yard line for Ohio. State. They haven't had great field position. They haven't done anything with it offensively, and their deepest penetration has been the what? Their own 34 their yard own line. 34 <laughs> yard line. We got it out to our own 34 once. They'll try it on the ground. Lydell Ross, he's going the wrong way. Loss of one. Abdul Hodge, the middle linebacker, number 52, makes the stop. 141 tackles tops in the Big Ten. Bob mentioned that earlier. And Abdul with a stop there. There's Ohio State's possessions. Not good. Not good. Four possessions, four punts. They've had the ball three and out on their last three possessions. They haven't had a first down even since there were 12 minutes left in the first quarter. So they've gone more than a quarter without a first down. One rushing yard for Ohio State. Ooh. High backfield. Brandon Joe, the fullback. His wick, though, a straight drop, throws out, and got it complete. There's a first down out to the 31-yard line to San Antonio Holmes. Javon Johnson was covering. What Ohio State needs to do is the same thing that the Hawkeyes are doing, and that is throwing and playing pitch and catch on first down, on running downs. Get Zwick out of the pocket. Little stop there, picks up a first down. At San Antonio Holmes, probably one of the top four or five, six receivers in the country. He's a good one. He's out to the top of your screen. Inside handoff. Ross found a little running room that time. Well, they've gone farther on the field than they have the whole game so far. They're out to the 36, their own 36 yard line. No, no reason to panic if you're Ohio State. Uh, just, you know, this is only our four, fifth possession. Let's just take the ball down, you know. He knows what his strengths is. He knows his strengths and weaknesses, and his offensive line is not his strength. His quarterback is new. Defense and the special teams and his kicker are what his strengths are. Second down, Ross again. Hit the hole immediately. Babino. Again, made the stop along with Hodge. John Babineau, one of the captains, a senior, another Texas native out of Port Arthur. And this kid has had more 
broken bones. He's broken both legs. In fact, last year against Ohio State, and I know he'd like to forget it, he suffered his season ending broken right leg, and they're still yeah. wearing a wrap around it. Yeah. And he had a broken leg earlier in his career. Right. right now, he's breaking up uh, the offensive line of Ohio State. That 45 he wears is because he was a linebacker and fullback in high school. Well, a big third down, obviously, for the Buckeyes to try to sustain a drive. Third and six. Zwick, wide open man. Got Anthony Gonzalez. It's a first down for the Buckeyes. Nice read by Zwick. Picking up the first down. That's all you want to do. Keep this drive going. They got nine yards on a third down and six. So they're working it out closer and closer to midfield. And we're closer and closer to the six and a half minute mark remaining in the second quarter. Nice, pr nice protection, zone coverage. Pick up a first down. At the 44 yard line. Pittman comes back in as a tailback. First four drives, a bunch of punts. This drive is already the best they've had. Zwick, high, intended for Holmes. He yes. got pushed in the yes, back. Yes, he did, and there's the late flag. Yep. Abdul Hodge, sometimes linebackers just can't keep their mitts off you. <laughs> yeah, you say that now. <laughs> say it to his face. <laughs> I'm no dummy. <laughs> That's interference on the defense, number 52. It's a spot foul, automatic first down. Abdul had 16 tackles last year against Ohio State. Watch this one. Right here. Whoops. There you go. Yeah. He, he pushed San Antonio right out of your circle. Yeah, he there. said, I, I don't want to, I don't want to play coverage. I want to tackle these guys. I don't want to play pass protection. So first down at the 47. There, loss of a yard on Pittman. Abdul Hodge again involved in the stop. He and Chad Greenway, the two linebackers, two really good ones, all Big Ten performers, probably couldn't be from more different backgrounds. Chad's from Mount Vernon, South Dakota, and he still has to do chores when he goes home to the farm to see his mom and dad. Abdul Hodge, a kid out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and Chad says. You know, I'd like to take him home, but I think Abdul's scared of animals, <laughs> so I can't take him to the farm. <laughs> Second down. Zwick lofts one. Caught down to the 36-yard line of Iowa. Good catch by Hamby, the tight end. And a pickup of 17. Yeah, that was a good throw, Zwick. Going to the tight ends. Let's take a look. Here's the tight end. He's just going to go straight up the field. This is an excellent throw. Just fits it in right in there. Yep. What is that? That's Perfect. a great, great play. Over the linebacker and between the two yep. defensive backs. So the first play for Ohio State in Iowa territory comes with 5.15 to go in the half. And it's Pittman. Broke one tackle. And then ran into Miguel Merrick. Ohio State offensively has really had to struggle to get points and only three touchdowns offensively in the last 13 quarters. But still, they're hanging on to the number 23 ranking in the country. I don't know if that's by reputation yeah. or people think they yeah. can snap out of well, this. But I, I think they've been one of the surprise teams by the fact that the negatively they've lost two ball games. I thought they'd be much better than this. Second down and eight. Trying to find an identity is what the coaches and players will say. They'd love to run the ball like this, but the running has been tough, although Pittman got five there. Abdul Hodge again in on the stop. At the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And don't forget, tomorrow at 12.30 Eastern, you can catch the IndyCar Series finale. It's a Chevrolet 500 from Texas Motor Speedway right here on ABC Sports. Big third down for both teams with four minutes left in the quarter. The tenth play of the Buckeye drive is a third and three at the Hawkeye 29 yard line. Zwick quick throw. Santonio Holmes breaks a tackle and he's got it down inside the 15 yard line. So Justin Zwick settling in on this drive much better than he was earlier in the ballgame. 
Watch your Holmes when he goes and he sits down. The ball is right there. Now watch as he quick move right there. He quick. He gets past two defenders, two tacklers that were trying to tackle him. Picks up the first down. That's just good. The ball was there. He caught it and quickly got away from the two guys trying to tackle him. The man down on the play for Ohio State's their center. And the guy that makes all the line calls up there, Nick Mangold and Nick 55, the junior out of Centerville, Ohio, slow to get up and still is not moving toward the sideline. Now they got him going. And you know a quarterback hates to see oh his main man yeah. leave the field when you got a drive going like this. Well, for a number of reasons, as you mentioned, he makes all the line calls. And secondly, the, just the center quarterback exchange. It's a little bit different with yep. each uh, center, each quarterback. That is going to bring out. Is Daddy's going to move over to center now? Or will they put TJ Downing in there? Let's wait and see how they line him up. Well, Bob Brett, I'm, I'm surprised that the quarterback did not take a couple of snaps yeah. from whomever was going to go in yeah. while they had a moment over there. Now, Daddish, maybe they did. It is going to be Daddish. So Daddy slides over from guard and gets over the ball for the first time. Let's see if the exchange is clean. Ross and tailback will get the call. Swarmed under at the 13 yard line. Again, Greenway, Hodge, the linebackers. Those two guys, when one makes a tackle, the other yeah. one wants to make a tackle. That's just the way they are off the field. They're very competitive in whatever they do. But you know what? That, that could be a negative. You got to be careful because if, if you if you get if you don't do your discipline and hold up your responsibility on defense and you run out trying to make too many tackles, that could hurt the defense. So they do it within the structure of the, de the defense. Mangles back in at center. Second down and eight. Zwick buys himself some time and found his man at the 10. But it's only about a three yard pickup, and now we got bodies flying in at the end. And it'll bring up a third down. See the Iowa staff pretty excited on the sideline. Well, they want a fumble. They thought it might have been a catch and a fumble. Still going to be third and long. Yeah, big play here. You ideally now, it's third and eight, third and nine. You, you'd like to get six points out of this, seven points off this drive. But at worst, you want Nugent to come in and be able to get you on the board before halftime. All three wideouts Childress, Holmes, and Hall to the right side. Swick, empty backfield on third and eight, looking to the right, going to the corner of the end zone. It's intercepted. Marcus Pascal's got it for Iowa. The only problem is a little too much celebration after the interception, I think. But it's Iowa football. Here it is here. The inside receiver is going to run to the corner. And Pasco sees it all the way. The ball just hangs. He had that covered all the way. The Hawkeyes get it back. They're penalized half the distance to the goal back to the 10 though. And that's what's been bugging Ohio State. The turnovers. They're minus sixth on the year right now. Hawkeyes with the lead, and they'll have the ball when we come back. You faintly see number 33 heading to the Iowa locker room. Marcus Simmons, the starting tailback, will limp up those steps as he started this game today after three previous tailbacks have gone down to injury. Sam Brownlee is playing tailback for the Hawkeyes. Tate scrambles around and gets out to the 13, maybe the 14 yard line. Coming up on the Valvoline halftime show, John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor will have highlights and analysis from today's games. Probably the biggest surprise in the Big Ten was Michigan State's handling of yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. After that big uh, heartbreaker loss last week. Last at Michigan, yeah. 
They won't be too happy with the state of Michigan after those two weeks, will it? Texas uh, coming off that big loss. To Oklahoma tied with uh, Missouri at home. We'll see Missouri next week. Tate three steps to the right, fires low but complete to Warren Holloway. And Holloway pretty close to a first down, but not quite. Dante Whitner made the tackle. Brad, the thing I'm noticing about Iowa offensively is that Drew Tate is not sitting still in the pocket. They came in uh, with a lot of sacks last in the conference in sacking the quarterback. He's helping his his offensive line out by always on the move. They're faking the play action, rolling outside, moving a little bit. They don't know where he is, but he's outside the pocket throwing on the run. Third down, a yard. Oh, what a hit in the hole. Tom Bush, the fullback, ran into A.J. Hawk. And he got the first down. And he got a whole mouthful of feathers from Hawk, I'll tell you that. Man, here's a kid, a linebacker all the way since he was about six years old, and now he's a fullback. Watch the collision with number 47. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Hawk knows that wherever there is a gap, there's an opening. That running back is going to show up eventually because the running back is going to see the hole, and he's going to just fill the hole. Hawks eighth tackle of the ball game. Had 20 tackles last week. First down. We're under a minute in the quarter. <laughs> trying to take it wide. Not much there from Mickens, the fullback, Quinn Pitcock. Pushed him out of bounds. Just 37 seconds left in the second quarter. Our Pacific Life game summary. In this one, it's been Iowa both offensively and defensively. Zwick getting heat, going down. Luke, he got him there. Then Tate back to throw. Firing that one to Holloway. And then to Solomon as he rolled right through back across his body. That's our only touchdown of the ball game. That capped a 61 yard drive for the Hawkeyes. They had the lead 10 0. And now it's Sam Brownlee off the left side to about the 25. Jay Richardson in on the tackle. So it looks like Iowa's just going to be happy to have that 10 point lead, not try to do anything fancy here before halftime. And now there is going to be a timeout. And let's see, is it going to be a timeout? timeout. Yes, but it Ohio is. State Ohio took State. One. Yeah. Ohio State takes a timeout. We'll take one too. With 18 seconds remaining in the half, Hawkeyes right now pitching a shutout. <laughs> Iowa with a huge advantage uh, in offense so far in this first half. A lot of it done with the passing of Drew Tate in the first quarter including the touchdown and now they've gone to the ground even though they've even lost the guy that started at tailback today. This has got to be some kind of record in five games to lose four tailbacks as Iowa has Simmons yeah. most recently with an ankle injury already in the locker room here before halftime. Ohio State wants to stop him and force him to punt. Maybe get a punt return. Tate sets up. He's going to go for a home run ball. Incomplete. Even had that been intercepted, it would have been as good as a punt. Underwood is the guy that laid out trying to catch it. They had single coverage down there on the uh, on the pass. And it was, I think it was a smart play, throwing it down there one on one. Now they got to punt the ball in the Ohio State has returned two punts for touchdowns, as you mentioned earlier in the ball game. Right now, just a single man back in Ginn, which would indicate maybe they're going to try to put the heat on Bradley, the punter who's at his own 10 yard line. Remember, Ginn scored a touchdown last week on a punt return against Wisconsin. If he gets his hands on it, he's lightning fast. I don't think he's going to get a chance to touch this one. Good punt. Got it out of there, even though it was heavy pressure. It goes out at the 29, and there's only one second left on the clock. Yeah, they went for the block and not the return, and they didn't get it. It was a nice job by the Hawkeyes of uh, punt protection. Not only that, but for Bradley, a 46-yard kick with the roll, and uh, you would assume that Ohio State, in the position in the field they're on at their own 29-yard line, will take a knee and try to regroup at halftime. So the Buckeyes continue to struggle with their offense. We told you only three offensive touchdowns 
in what now will be 14 quarters and they're going to be shut out in the first half on the road in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes try to win their 16th straight home game the fifth longest winning home streak in the country and through two quarters they've still got it in their grasp. Let's check in with Swanick. Well, Coach, you've got a 10 nothing lead, which is always good going into halftime. Already, 2004 has got to be for Iowa the season of the lost tailback. I dare say, with the way you're throwing the ball on offense, that's not going to have an impact on your game plan. Well, we're trying not to think about that part right now. We're just gonna, we have to keep playing. Our guys came ready to play today. We've played a good first half. Uh, a little disappointed we let them drive the field that last series, but yeah, we have 30 minutes left. We have to just focus on that. Coach, take to the second half. All right, guys. And Kirk Ferentz talking about the fact that his team gave up a lot of yardage on that last drive. Well, coach, it was 68 yards and 13 plays for the Buckeyes, but they didn't get any points out of it. So no harm, no foul, and your team still has the lead 10 nothing at halftime. As the Hawkeyes head into the locker room, our guys in the locker room, the Abilene Halftime Show with John Saunders, Craig James, and Aaron Taylor will be coming up next. That will be right after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Halftime, 10 nothing Iowa. You're watching ABC Sports. Championship Television. You're watching college football on ABC Sports Championship Television. Sold out Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeye fans happy with what they're seeing. It's 10 nothing. Hawkeyes trying to win their 16th straight game at home. Welcome back to Iowa City, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swans down on the field. I like what I'm seeing from Iowa so far and their quarterback, Drew Tate, but we said it was going to be tough on both these quarterbacks. Iowa hasn't given the Ohio State offense anything. Well, we said it was a defensive struggle. Uh, Iowa doing what they have to do with Tate, get him out of the pocket. I think for Ohio State, they have to do some of the same. Get the quarterback outside the pocket and maybe lay Later on, get the other quarterback in there, give him a chance, and maybe make Zwick feel a little bit better if the uh, if the other quarterback goes in and doesn't succeed. Hey, it's tougher out there than you think it is, and then you maybe you can put Zwick back in the ball game. Justin Zwick only six out of 14, 74 yards, and the interception in the end zone that killed the. 68 yard march in 13 plays that came away with no points but they'll get their hands on the ball first to start the quarter. It'll be San Antonio Holmes from the four on the kick return. Oh boy. Oh boy. Good thing somebody got a hand and tripped him up or yes. he might have been off to the races. Let's check in with Swanick. Well Brad you talked about the best drive for Ohio State being that last drive 68 yards about 13 plays. It ended up with a turnover. But Coach Tressel said the difference between that drive and any other drive in the first half were little things. Being able to string eight or nine plays together in a row. Running the football just a little bit better. For a guy whose team is behind, I will tell you he was very confident, very poised that they'd be back in this ball game in the second half. Brad. Even though we mentioned Zwick's numbers not being that good, other than the interception, he looked pretty good on that drive late in the second quarter. Now he'll work from just inside his own 29-yard line. On the ground, Lionel Ross, almost for a loss, got about a yard. Abdul Hodge made another stop. Our Pacific Life game summary statistically in the first half, as you might expect with Iowa in front, 220 to 88 in total yardage. Yeah, that's a big one there. Turnovers are even, three and outs uh, for Ohio State. They had the ball, five possessions, four punts, and the last possession, they turned it over with an interception. But I think I think what Ohio State has to do is just like they did there and do it differently. Not run on first down, but throw the ball on first down some because that line of Iowa is just eating it up, eating them up. Here is Wick on second and long. Here comes that line of Iowa, and down he goes. And the ball is loose as well. Zwick looks like he's shaken up again. Who's got the football? They still haven't given us a signal. Now they have it's Iowa. Zwick looks like he's hurt, and he, I think he's been hurting the whole ball game. I think it's Derek Robinson, Bob, is going to cause the fumble right there. Yeah, he knocks it out there. Whenever you start to scramble, you've got to hold on to the ball. And that looks like it's either a rib or something. Or a shoulder, maybe. Yeah. You mentioned it earlier. He was kind of carrying his right arm in a weird fashion in the second quarter. Meanwhile, Tate, play action. He might run with it. He's got some blockers in front of him. 
hammered from behind, but not before he got to the 20 yard line. Almost a first down run. Schlegel made the stop on the Iowa quarterback. And now Tate comes up with a helmet off and he might be bleeding. He's lost his head a couple times this year, but he's a <laughs> yes. tough customer. <laughs> and in college football, as soon as the helmet, as soon as the helmet comes off, watch this play against Michigan. He says, stops. "Okay, I'm, I'm tough. I'm going to throw." Flags yeah. down, and the play was dead. And he almost threw a touchdown. Yeah, as soon as the helmet comes off, the play stops. But that little blood got it cleaned up and went back. Maybe he needs a smaller helmet. I don't know, but it's a first down at the 20. Blitz coming for the Buckeyes. Tate's going to keep it. He was going to hand it off. I'm not so sure he didn't pull it's that out good, of his tailback's it's a, gut. It's a good thing he didn't. Bob and Brad, I know it's Iowa's offense on the field right now, but just to let you know, as soon as the ball was turned over, when the uh, uh, when the Buckeye offense came off the field, Troy Smith got up, immediately went to the phone to talk to the coaches upstairs. I have a feeling there will be a quarterback change in the next possession for Ohio State. He's yeah. been wearing a stocking cap all day, but the helmet's on and the cap is off, Swanee, and he's warming up. Meanwhile, for Iowa, they have a golden opportunity here with the fumble recovery, leading 10 0 to take control of the game. They've got second down and 10. Drew Tate in the shotgun. Looks to the right, goes to Hinkle, who's wide open at the 12 and out of bounds at the 11. Dustin Fox ran him out. This is just a, a, a ball control offense. Make no mistakes. Receiver right here just going to go down and stop. Look for the inside receiver. If, he, if he's uh, covered deep, just let it go. But this is a ball control offense and defense. The defense is a Ben don't break for Iowa. It's third down and one. Brownlee is the tailback in the eye. He gets a pitch. He's got the first and more. Still on his feet. Finally, swarmed down at the eight yard line. I want to tell you for a fifth string running back who obviously doesn't get many snaps in practice. That was a pretty good run by sure Brown instead of trying to take that to the four sideline turns it up back against the grain inside and picks up the first down. Tough kid coming out right now but that's because he got the first down at the eight. First and goal Iowa. Can they turn the turnover into a touchdown. Hinkle goes way up to the left side of the top of your screen. receiver stretched out to get his hand inside the pylon in the corner and Iowa leads 16 to nothing. His brother was the quarterback here last year. Chandler like you said was a wide receiver moved to an H back tight end just came across and made the play. I almost called Scott Nate on that touchdown. Let's go. And the extra point is good. So Scott Chandler touchdown pass for Drew Tate his second of the day. Just in the corner of the end zone, it's 17 to nothing, Hawkeye. A young girl inspires the impossible. A new Extreme Makeover Home Edition, ABC Sunday. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown. Here's the tight end, Chandler. He's going to come in motion across the formation. These two guys run slants, and all he's going to do is run a little arrow route to the outside. Watches the defensive backs are going to get hung up on the two slant routes, and then a, that's that's just good coaching. Two quick slants, kind of attract the defense, and then get it to the guy that's running away from him. And we know brother Nate probably watching his little brother Scott with that touchdown catch. Santelio Holmes is four yards deep. He wants to try to make something happen, and that's not what he wanted to happen. Andy Becker. Uh, the special teams with a stop, and I mean a big hit. We talked about the good special teams of both teams, and I think you're seeing some of it on the coverage by Iowa. 
they know that they've got to get out there and cover these kicks. Troy Smith will be the quarterback. So all the folks in Columbus who wanted to see him, I'm pretty sure they didn't want to see him with Justin Zwick being injured, but here he comes. There's his numbers. One touchdown pass in those two completions this year. A sophomore out of Cleveland. And he's got to work behind 17 points and from the shotgun. Play fake to Ross, comes up throwing. In and out of the hands of Childress. A little high. Yeah. Childress could have hang, yeah. hung on to it, I yeah. think. But, the, but uh, the wide receivers have got to help the new quarterback now. The, the wide receivers, Childress and those guys have been in the game. Slow up a little bit. If you have to go up and catch it with your body, if it's a little behind you, make a play for the new quarterback. Jim Tressel talking to his quarterback, Justin Zwick, on the sideline, who's becoming the signal man now to send the plays in. And his shoulder, I think, hurts so bad he's having a hard time raising his arms just to get the play call into Smith. This is Ohio State's third time they've started inside their own 20 yard line. Smith mix up communication with Ross, and he has to eat it. At about the 14 yard line. Roth and Greenway are there. Swanee. Brad, when Zwick came off to the sideline, one reason why he'll have a hard time lifting that right shoulder and signaling is they stuffed a huge ice bag in underneath. So obviously it is a shoulder injury, but Bob, I'd have to agree with you. This seems like it was an injury that maybe was bothering him maybe prior to this ball game. And it just was aggravated as he played on in this game. Well, we saw it early in the first half when he came off a couple of times. He was holding his arm really close to his chest. And that's third down and long for Troy Smith. And I don't think they're going to get the play any, anywhere near. Now they'll call a timeout. And the flag came in anyway. So delay a game. They took timeout before the clock expired. All right, so the flag is picked up. Dick Honig saying they took the timeout with one second before the clock expired. So Ross over there, he's talking with Jim Trestle about the miscommunication with Smith on what was supposed to be a draw play, I guess, two plays ago. And now they have a third and long upcoming. In the second quarter, we asked you this week's AFLAC trivia question who holds the NCAA record for most consecutive 100 yard rushing games? Fellas, who wants to go first? Swanee, you want to go first? Swanee can't hear me. Well, how about you, Bob? I, since we're doing I, I this can, game, I can, but I'm choosing not to. At the oh, you're choosing not to say. <laughs> I, I, since we're doing this game, and since you know, coincidence, I'd, I'd say Archie Griffin. I just saw him in the well in the runway back here. We'll tell you right after this play. Third down and nine from the shotgun. Four wideouts. And Smith here in the noise from the Iowa faithful here. Pressure coming. He got rid of it. Oh, boy, that could have been almost intercepted. <laughs> Was that Roth? Roth just runs over the right tackle. Just flat out runs over him. Matt Roth, one of the captains, and watch him come. He loves to play the game of football, <laughs> and that's how he plays it. Yeah. Wow. We'll, we'll, we'll let you hear what he thinks about offensive linemen a little bit later. <laughs> we were talking to him yesterday. Tough spot for Toronto now as he's at his own goal line to punt. Bellis should get a chance to return this one. Looks up in the sun and takes it at the 38. Going to the left across midfield. Bellis still on his feet down to the 35 yard line. working for the Hawkeyes right now. A 26-yard punt return. Going back to the trivia question, who holds the NCAA record for most consecutive 100-yard rushing games? Archie Griffin stopped in the booth earlier, and I think Archie had somewhere around 31 or 32 straight games of 100-plus, so I'm going with Archie, the two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Well, I'm just going with the group. Okay, go with the group. Let's see what we got. And as we take a look at our answer, there he comes, Ohio State, two-time Heisman winner, 31 straight 100-yard rushing games for the great Archie Griffin, who stopped in a sauce in the booth before the ball game. Still works for the Ohio State University. And 
a great ambassador yeah. and a great For guy. Sure. We love seeing him. Every oh, time he's see. great. He's great. Every time I see him, too, I think about the other freshman running backs uh, that that are, st are around the uh, country now. The one for Michigan, uh, where uh, the kid uh, for Georgia, uh, Peterson, Peterson. Yep. down in Texas. Uh, I just wonder what Archie could have done if he would have been uh, eligible to play as a true freshman. Still the only man to win two Heisman trophies his junior and senior seasons for Woody Hayes. Second down. This Ohio State team's in trouble right now, especially if Iowa gets any kind of points out of this drive. Tate still on the run. Throws, and that's almost intercepted. E.J. Underwood got his hands on it, but he's out of bounds. And Mike Kudla brought all the pressure. Yeah, I want to go back to what that Aflac trivia question. All right. What did I hear say, Swanee say? Well, go, I'll just go. I I'll go with the group. I don't want to guess first, and they said, I'll go with the group? Yeah, that's what he said. So is, that, is, that, is that a man that's trailing in this thing? <laughs> I'm playing the odds here. <laughs> that's well, a man that's in trouble. Uh -huh. here, is, here is the reason just why. Just holding on. Here is the reason why I chose Epstein initially. Yeah. Although it's no rule, I always thought we always had a question about the home team. Yep, I agree. That happens a lot. And it didn't happen this time. Yeah. So they threw you a curveball. <laughs> so I just backed off <laughs> the plate just a bit. Third and ten for Tate. Pressured. Throws. Got his man, and Chandler dropped this one. Uh, Boy, that would have been a first down uh, inside the sure. 15. Tate's doing everything he can to buy time. You know, the that this defense, a good defense, and they had everybody covered, and they had pressure on the quarterback, but Tate makes something happen by buying time, allows receivers to get open, puts it there, and then they drop it. For how young he is, his presence of scrambling to buy himself that time and still keeping his eyes downfield is about as good as we've seen I, this year. I'll tell you what, this, this kid is really impressive. Bradley now to punt. High snap. He handles it. Just trying to pooch it down there. And I think he's done a good job inside the five. That's all they wanted. Just hang it up there. Let Walner Bellis run under it. A 31 yard kick. And Ohio State, terrible field position offensively again when we come back. And they trail by 17. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Hummer. Check out the H2 Hummer like nothing else. Singular wireless. Aflac, ask about it at work. And AOL for broadband, proud sponsor of First and Ten. And the broadband folks for Ohio State don't like that spot where the First and Ten is because it's at their own four yard line. With the backup quarterback in, Troy Smith under center. His second series, Justin Zwick going out with an injury. Ross hitting the backfield, swarmed under, may have lost a yard. Abdul Hodge, the first man there. Man, has he been around the football a lot today. Abdul Hodge, a junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 6'2", 232, he's a missile. Stuff like this. And plays like this. He is something else. You can see how he had over 140 tackles last year to lead the Big Ten, an all Big Ten performer. He's got nine tackles so far. We got a long ways to go. And he's not the leading tackler on this team. It's Greenway, the other inside linebacker. Tough spot for Ohio State. Ross again puts both hands. No, it was not Ross. Brandon Joe, the fullback, puts both arms around it and got it out to about the six. And Matt Roth. On the bottom of that pile, you saw Matt run over that tackle earlier, and he's got those big old arms with the tattoos and a snapshot of our defensive end, one of four kids, two brothers, and a sister. Megan, he says, she got all the brains in the family. His mom and dad waited until all the kids had grown up before they built a new house because the three boys ruined the first one. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Third down and eight. Smith from his own end zone. In trouble, down he goes. And it's Roth again. Roth just pushed him down, much like he pushes down offensive linemen. He doesn't think much of the offensive line. Lazy, um, disgusting, 
but uh, I respect them and uh, great holders. Fat, lazy, <laughs> and ugly, but I respect him. That's a good line. And great holders. Uh -huh. They hold a lot. Toronto to punt. Will they bring the heat? Yep. Not a good kick. They clear everybody out of the way, and they'll still have great field position. The Hawkeyes, that is, at the 46-yard line. So the defense of Norm Parker playing so well today. And Matt Roth leading the way along with Hodge. You see the tattoos on Matt Ross left arm. He got the tattoo and for a long time he tried to wear long sleeves. I didn't want my mom to see the tattoos. I thought she'd get mad at me. Keep the heat on her ass. She's seen them now. She's seen them now. He promised her no more. First down. Drew Tate's gonna drop the throw and swing it out the backfield. Brownlee out in the flat. Brownlee down the sideline. Takes a big hit, but he's out of bounds, and it's going to be very close to a first down. Well, we take a look for that. 17 to nothing, Iowa here, and it looks like Nebraska rebounded today, I think. Let's check in with John. Brad, they did as we bring you the singular All-America Player of the Week. You could vote for this guy, Joe Daly. First ever Nebraska quarterback to throw for 300-plus yards. He also had five touchdown passes, tying a school record. To vote, text the word player to 64444 or go on to ESPN.com, keyword singular. Brad. All right, John, thanks. You knew somewhere along the line on that Bill Callahan offense that that 300-yard barrier would finally drop and what was it David Hum had the previous best and it was about yeah. 280 or something like that is it Nebraska happy that they play a game every week yeah you can get that taste out of your mouth from the Texas Tech game of oh, a week oh, ago boy. yeah they struggled to say the least last week the most points ever allowed as the Red Raiders hung 70 on them most lopsided loss and all the rest I heard Chris Fowler saying game day this morning Talking about giving up 70 points. He said Tom Osborne's team gave up 70 points one time. It was the whole Big 8 season. <laughs> yeah. 72 yeah. points. Yeah, that was good. Play action. Tate wants it all. Going deep. Got a man open. Get him. Touchdown. Again, and then Tate running down the field, doing the herky jerky. It's a happy bunch of herky Hawkeyes right now. 36-yard touchdown. You know, it's good execution by the quarterback, but it's also a great planning and play calling by the coaching staff. Iowa with a 24 to nothing lead. They got the first down run from Brownlee, and then on first down, they said, let's do this. They got single coverage out here. Now look, right here, look how far the corner is inside the guy running straight down the field. He was playing way inside, then the play action went away from him. That's just good, just scouting a good, good play calling by Bill O'Keefe and his staff. And Bob, one of the good things about the receiver on this is the fact that he didn't drift inside too much. There's a tendency when you're in that situation to drift inside and allow that cornerback to get closer to you, but he stayed out and he and Drew celebrate yet again. Yeah, I'm sure that Ken O'Keefe and his offensive staff has seen some of that in practice. If you get the right situation and you get the right play call, that that'll happen and be there. And they got it called and they did it the right way. I think Drew Tate's created a new dance for Iowa City with that move going downfield. There's the battery. Tate, there's the offensive coordinator who called it Ken O'Keefe. And Iowa is all over Ohio State right now, 24 to nothing. Santonio Holmes fields it at the one yard line. Holmes trying to get outside, follows his blockers, gets a nice return for Santonio. Out about a 30 yard return. Miguel Merrick finally knocked him out of bounds. Coming up next Saturday, ABC's College Football features another huge showdown in the Big Ten. Braylon Edwards will lead the Wolverines into West Lafayette to take on Kyle Orton and the Boilermakers. That's next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, right here on ABC Sports. And Braylon Edwards does things like this as he did it against Iowa earlier this year. Kind of held in check today. He did have a touchdown call back due to penalty, but uh, one of the great receivers in college football, without a doubt. 
I, I second that motion. It'll be Pittman on the handoff, and Pittman breaks through into the secondary to the 36. Derek Robinson was holding on for dear life and helped to bring him down. Pittman, they like this kid out of Akron. 5'11", 190-pound freshman. You've got eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Ohio State now just has to open it up a little bit. They, they don't have much time to be running plays, but they expect to get back in this ballgame. Zwick on the sideline with a bad shoulder. Troy Smith, his understudy, who so many people in Columbus have wanted to see or seeing him now, but he's playing from behind in there. Gonna keep it on the ground here. Well, this is his audition. If he, if for the rest of the season, this is his opportunity right now for Troy Smith. Sold out Kinnick Stadium in its 75th anniversary year. I'm Brad Nestler with Bob Greasley. Lynn Swan on our ABC crew as the sun is out. And boy, is the sun shining on the Hawkeyes right now. They have dominated the football game. They lead 24 to nothing. They've taken advantage of every opportunity Ohio State's offered them. And they've taken it the length of the field a couple of times on their very own to score. Trying to get a first down is Smith. I don't know. I don't think he got it. I don't think so either. He went sideways instead of going forward. Roth is a guy that stopped in the spot's going to be pretty vital. And now they say first down. He's getting so, a very nice spot. Yeah, he did get a pretty good spot. Yeah. You know, a lot of times if you just go forward, it's the it's the it's the officials on the side, the side judge and the then the linesman who have to come in and mark it, and they're not really sure word to market right. and a lot of times they'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It's an inexact science and that's what Kirk <laughs> Ferentz is telling the linesman right now. He's smiling. <laughs> he, he knows. Well with a 24 to nothing lead he's not going to make a big stink out of it. That's for sure. Boy there's nothing there on the ground for Pittman. Bob and Brad, well, with Troy Smith in the ball game, I want to go back to something, Bob, you've said in the past about young quarterbacks getting a chance to play. When they get in the ball game, they have to have an opportunity to make some mistakes in order to learn. And first and goal now, Iowa at the Ohio State four-yard line. Tate the give to Brownlee. He's hitting the backfield, and now he's got Hawk all over him. And he's going to lose yardage. Lost about two. This is a pretty good Ohio State defense too. They came into the into the ball game ranked 33rd in the nation in total defense. Now the extra tight end comes in Chandler Hinkle and Holloway check in as well. And when you got it right here at the six yard line second down and goal 10th play of the drive you start thinking maybe play action or a little bit of a rollout and give him a chance to do something with it. He's already thrown three touchdowns today. Well, it won't be play action. He's in the shotgun. And he throws complete Holloway at about the two. Dante Whitner put a licking on him there, but he held onto the ball. And the quarter is going to come to a close. That's going to make the people in the left end zone happy because <laughs> Iowa's only two yards away from another touchdown. We're going to switch ends. 24 to nothing at the end of three. Our presentation of college football continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Millionaire, weeknights at 7.30 on ABC6. The Hawkeyes haven't been able to ride over the Buckeyes in eight straight years. But their fans came fully painted today and full of throat to watch a defense be all over the Buckeyes so far today in an offense that has turned out a solid performance. Jim Trestle's never lost three games in a row, and right now, going into the fourth quarter, it's an uphill swim for him because it's 24 to nothing. Iowa leading Ohio State, and it could get worse in a play or two. It's third and goal, just outside the one-yard line. Brownlee, the tailback, play action. Tate wants to throw. Now he cuts it up himself to the end zone. Touchdown! Does he run over somebody or what? This is a little guy. He ran over Nate Sally for one. Part of it was just his guts. Part of it was a big offensive lineman helping to move the pile he was in.
He's thrown for three and now he's run for one. Kyle Slicker in for the point after to make it. Oh. Not 31 to nothing. It's blocked. Free ball covered by Iowa. A one yard touchdown run by Drew Tate. And on this one, I think he drew to an inside straight because I don't know how he got in there. Well, his man in the end zone was covered, then that his offensive guard, Jones, is going to come and help him. Look, that's Carpenter, 42, a linebacker, but 76, the big offensive lineman, Jones, comes and helps push him into the end zone. Watch the lineman there in front of him. But of course, Bob, we know he wasn't really pushing. He was just blocking a man. Blocking, yeah. <laughs> Not aiding and abetting. Drew Tate, what a show. Three touchdowns in the air. Eight rushes, including a touchdown on the ground. And it's going to be hard to keep him from being uh, maybe the Big Ten player oh, of the week. Yeah, he wins anything he wants to win this week. You know, I see two teams. Iowa is getting better and better. Even though they haven't got a running game or a running back, they're down to their fifth and sixth running backs. This offense is getting better because of the quarterback getting better. I don't see Ohio State getting better because of the quarterback situation. At the 13, it's Ted Ginn. Oh, wow, what a collision. Man. What a shot. There's a desperate housewife right there. The longest <laughs> home, home winning streaks. Boise State 22, USC and Oklahoma next in line. And both, well, one won and one is winning. And Iowa trying to go to 16. Well, they're, they're, they're keeping that streak alive. If you haven't seen Desperate Housewives on ABC, uh, that's a Desperate Housewife. I'm not, be, I'm not saying because of who she's married to, but desperate because he happens to be a Buckeye fan. Lydell lost for a loss of three. Derek Robinson and Abdul Hodge get it. It's Ohio State still has not scored against Iowa in the last two years. They didn't score an offensive touchdown last year and through three three quarters in this ball game, they still haven't scored a touchdown. And it's been 11 years since they've been shut out, the Buckeyes. The last time the, the much hated Wolverines. Yeah. They haven't even gotten close for their all-American field goal kicker, Newton, right. to try one. Smith back to throw, comes back to Hamby, the tight end, who broke the tackle, and got out near the 38-yard line, about a yard and a half short of a first down. Bob and Bradley, this might be a little bit premature to say this, but since, Bob, you brought up Nugent, during the warm-up, pre-game pre warm-up, I actually watched Nugent as he was practicing kicking field goals from about the 40 45 yard line with the win he was kicking so well he actually practiced a couple on this side of the 50 yard line wow. he was just a tad short the win has died down since the start of this ball game but they might give him a shot later in the ball game well he's obviously a grosser candidate and was a semifinalist for that award last year for kicking honors it's Troy Smith brought down it was Babineau who got him by the shoelaces to trip him up. And a long yardage situation coming. There's Mike Nugent, a Groza kicking candidate, but he might get as many kicks as Lou today, yeah. the way Iowa's defense is playing. Yeah, well, and they don't need field goals. They need touchdowns yeah. to get back in this one. Fourth down and a yard coming up. Well, they're actually going to bring the chains out. Maybe it's closer than that. So we'll bring it all the way across the field here. Looked to me like they were almost a yard short, but we'll see. And it is a yard short. So fourth down coming up as we check in with John in New York. Brad, Texas against Missouri, and Texas, of course, trying to follow up after the shutout loss to Oklahoma. Cedric Benson struggled in that game, not today. There's 136 yards on the ground, 14 on that carry as Texas widens their lead now to 28-14 over Missouri. Brad. 
All right, John, Texas has never lost when Cedric Benson's gone over 100 yards. That would be 20 straight games if they hold on to that lead against Missouri. It is fourth down and one. Yeah. What do you do? I just, you know, I see Ohio State. I see them probably going to lose their third straight game in a row, and it was only like a couple of years ago. They were in the national championship game against Miami and won a championship. They lost, what, 14 guys to the NFL? Last Iowa's got it. Smith never got the ball to Lydell Ross. He was tripping, trying to hand it off. And Derek Robinson and company took advantage. How the mighty have fallen. He got tripped. He got tripped by one of his linemen. But, but as a quarterback, you got to get away from center. He had a long stride and he was reaching. The quarterback needs to gather himself and get away from the line of scrimmage. So that does not happen. Iowa with a big lead. They went more as Tate comes up firing the Hinker. Out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Get a load of this. Iowa this half has run 23 plays. 21 of them have been on Ohio State's end of the field. Well, that tells a story. Doesn't it? Justin Zwick can only look on. But you know what? He probably feels a little bit better since Troy Smith has gone in in some ways. Right. Just to let everybody know, hey, it's not it's only not me. All me. The next guy goes in and he's had problems. First down at the 22. Hinkle taps Drew Tate on the backside in motion. And now to the ground they go. And it's Sims for a yard or two. Penalty marker down. Yaboli made the tackle. And we're at 12.35 remaining in the ballgame. Surprises, partner. Surprises on Surprise the year. Surprise teams on the Holding year, yeah. Number 76 on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. I would have said Louisville. They yeah. played a one on Thursday yeah. night, but they still have, they're nice surprise. I like yeah. their team. Yeah, I like their team. Yeah. Um, well, this is probably a surprise at Ohio State. I, I agree. Shut out. I agree. This is a negative. Well, the way they have played this year, this will be their third loss on the year. Right. I thought that they were going to be one of the better teams. Auburn's got to be a positive surprise. And I think Purdue. A big game against Arkansas yeah. today. I think I think Purdue and what they've done to this point has got to be a surprise. They're ranked fifth in the country. Haven't been that high since the late 70s. They don't get the playoff here. But Bob, speaking about Purdue, Number I think probably the, the offense, biggest surprise yards, still first down is, is not so much that their offense is playing well, but how good their defense has been. Good point. Yep. They lost uh, what eight, nine starters off of that uh, defense. You were starting to say before that last fumble how much Ohio State lost to the NFL and you can't lose that many guys and expect to be as good as you were last season and Jim Trestle knew that going into the year. Well, and the other thing about that is he has he has 15 or 16 starters back from this team next year. So this is a young team. Now, in fact he's got 18 starters from this uh, offense and defense back next year. So I this, is, this is really a transition year for him. He lost a lot to the NFL and he's got a lot coming back next year. I think a big surprise to me would not necessarily be a team but the impact that freshmen have had on teams and I mean big time impacts this year uh -huh. seems more so than in recent years even even at Michigan even at Michigan where, the quarterback where, and the tailback. Yeah where Lloyd Carr would never play <laughs> a true freshman. And, and now he's got two of them starting in his offensive backfield. Second down and 23. Blitz coming. Tate's going to run right into that one by Frazier, who's been waiting all day. He's seen that two or three he times. Certainly has. That time he knew it was coming, and he put the stop on the quarterback. 
You know, we saw Adrian Peterson last week go for 225 yards against Texas, which was an unbelievable performance, including 44 on his first carry right here from his own end zone. And I said to Bob at the time, I don't know if I've seen a guy with speed and power matched like this kid since 1980 when Herschel Walker was a freshman at the University of Georgia. We all started talking about that a little bit this week, and we decided what we're going to do in the next couple of weeks, we're going to track Adrian Peterson's numbers compared to Herschel Walker's numbers in their freshman seasons because Herschel's a pretty good uh, measuring stick, we thought. Peterson is a true freshman, mm -hmm. by the way. Tate on third to mile, buys time, throws, got his man. It's not a first down, but what a throw down to the 22, 23 yard line to Warren Holloway. Tate's making all the plays. No, nobody was there, wasn't sacked. Avoided the sack, got outside the pocket. But now he's given his field goal unit a chance if that's what they want to do. They never would have had a chance from where they were before. So here they come. That's what that throw was about, an extra three points. Yeah. Well, Bob and Brad, just as a reminder, that extra point was blocked. Every single field goal or extra point that he's kicked today has been unusually low. Yes, I agree. He did. Kick a 45-yarder, though, a career-long earlier. This will be a 41-yard attempt from the right hash mark for Kyle Schlicker. The hold is good. The kick is on the way, and he's got it. Some big shoes to fill, considering the kicker they've had the last few years. But that smile tells the story. He's doing a pretty good job today. 9-28 to play in the ballgame. Still pitching a shutout. And now it's Iowa 33 to nothing. And all new according to Jim. Tuesday, 9-8 Central, only on ABC. The pressure on Ohio State now. And Troy Smith, their quarterback. 33 to nothing. 928 remaining in the ball game. Schlicker who just hit the field goal. Knuckleballs down the kick that's still alive. And fumbled. Who's got it? Might be Iowa again. Nope. Ohio State ball. Could have been the very last chance. Not Jim, Jim Trestle sending his quarterback out there in a tough spot. We talked about Adrian Peterson and Herschel Walker before the timeout, the comparison. We all got together and started thinking about it. Here's through the first six games. Herschel had three 100 yard plus games, tacking up 746 and six touchdowns. Adrian Peterson had another 100 yard plus game today, his sixth straight. He has 901 yards rushing. So he's ahead of Herschel's sensational pace. Of course, a few more carries in there as well. But we're going to continue watching that as we go for the next two or three weeks. And I think, Bob, the other thing we all kind of started talking about last night over a, a diet beverage, Diet Coke, uh, can you vote for him for the Heisman Trophy even though he's a freshman? Well, if he's the best player in the country, uh, I think you can. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're playing more and more true freshmen than they ever have uh, due to injuries and lack of scholarships and what have you. If you're a Heisman voter, you don't want to wait till a guy's a senior because you never get a chance to vote he for him. He may not be there. <laughs> and this, I have a question for you guys. All right. Well, I mean, if, if Adrian Peterson is in line for Heisman Trophy, I'll wait till after this play, though. Smith the throw and throws a good one to Hamby, the tight end, and that's going to be a first down. Go ahead, Swanee. So let's say he has a kind of year where he's deserving of votes for the Heisman Trophy or could possibly win the Heisman Trophy. Has there ever been a team that had back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy winners, two different guys? Two different positions. That's a good point. It has happened. Uh, probably Army. I think Blanchard and uh, sounds like those. an Affleck trivia question. Yeah, maybe we should me. leave that alone, huh? <laughs> no, I, I, I think we have Doc. an answer. We'll get it for you but soon. They're telling us in the truck, and those guys know everything. Because they got the book. That Yale had back-to-back -back Heisman Trophy winners in the 30s, and Army had Blanchard and Davis, Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside. So we got a timeout. 8-12 remaining in the ball game in uh, lopsided Iowa advantage.
ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. City business with real live small business specialists on the phone. That's a card you can count on. And AOL for Broadband, proud sponsor of our first and ten. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, Kinnick Stadium in its 75th year. has probably never seen a more gratifying victory, although there's eight minutes and 12 seconds left. They are shutting out the number 23 team in the country, 33 to nothing. And, the, and not many of these fans have left. They want to savor this. You got that end. right. Smith going deep. Got a man out there. It's Holmes. Just overshadowed. Let's check in with Swan. Well, Brad, this is the 75th anniversary of Kinnick Stadium, and so to honor it, they developed a little program where they have herkies all over the stadium, all over the town. And they're statues, and they've been designed in, in, in various ways. There's a Big Ten herky, there's a Hayden Fry herky, there's a couple of examples right there. And what they're going to do, sponsors have bought these and developed the designs for these and so they're going to keep them. But the ones that aren't picked up by sponsors are going to be sold in an auction in November to help, shall we say, contribute to the cost of renovation to the South End Zone. So right. as Kirk Ferentz continues, there's going to be a lot of high prices for those Herkies. Fumble! Iowa's! Nope, they're going to say Ohio State. I thought they had it. Matt Roth Matt made Roth. the hit. Matt Roth causing some havoc today. Again, there he is. Here he is over here, Matt Roth, number 31. He doesn't seem very intimidating because he wears number 31. He just bulls past the offensive tackle. That's Schaefer, number 68. Roth, who grew up in Villa Park, Illinois, wanted to be the next Dick Butkus. I think he's going to have to. Yeah. He's going to have to live with being one heck of a defensive lineman for Iowa, and he'll play on Sunday too. Let, you let me say the reason he wore number 31 is because he had he was 31 and all his senior year in As wrestling. a wrestler. That's right. He's a wrestler. No wonder he's so tough. Smith, play action. Look out! Oh man, he took a lick. I think from Roth again. And Troy Smith's going to feel that one tomorrow. Matt Roth was a preseason Playboy All-American. And I know a lot of kids don't say much about that. He said, I never thought I'd see my picture in Playboy. I thought my mom or my sister would beat me to it. <laughs> That's a guy you got to love. <laughs> and look at the hit he puts on the corner. Oh, man. He would be so much more intimidating if he had the number 99 or 90 or. We told you at the yeah. beginning of the game, he's kind of like our kind of player <laughs> because he brings it on every play, and he's been totally bringing it in the second half. Toronto's kick goes down to Bellis. Got past the first man. Ellis has done a nice job on punt returns today. Gets out to the 42-yard line. I tell you what, you give me about 30 of these guys, I can coach. Iowa leads Ohio State 33 to nothing. I think if you come out of this one, partner, you can say it's just like we drew it up. Drew Tate's been As something else. Drew Tate, right? Yeah. Uh, I've been very impressed. Uh, coming out here without your top three running backs and then losing another running back. Uh, the offensive game plan for Iowa was tremendous. Getting him outside the pocket, moving him around, the throw the football downfield. Um, very impressed. And it's just, it goes back to the coaching staff. Do what you do what you can do, and don't ask your players to do something you can't do. The ball carrier. What they're finding out is how many things number five can do, I think. And the more rope they give him, the farther he seems to stretch it. And he is a competitor. Boy, they told us that. Yeah. And we've watched him on film and yeah. remembered seeing him last year out on the practice fields, but Dad's he's a, coming of age here. Dad's a high school football coach. That's always that's that always, always helps. Tells you something. The BCS poll comes out tomorrow for the morning. first time, on Monday for the first time. Well, USC, Oklahoma, and Miami and Auburn should all be one, two, three, four. And then you gotta think about that five spot, your alma mater, depending on what goes on in the Wisconsin yeah. game. And Virginia and Florida State, uh, depending on what happens there. They play tonight on ESPN. Here's the running game going for Iowa. Damian Sims, a freshman. A guy that they had not planned on playing this year, but due to all the injuries, all of a sudden he's playing and he's playing pretty well on that yep. one. Watch the blocking on the left side. 
It's just straight blocking. The fullback gets through, slides through. That's Bush. And as you mentioned, the true freshman, they're going to have to get him into the mix now because of all the injuries. Yep. His teammates say he's got a little Freddie Russell in him. I know Hawkeye fans remember Fast Freddie and all the moves he could put on in the open field. And they say this kid probably has a little more afterburner speed than Fred did. Make, can make some big plays. Takes, rolls and throws, and again throws a strike. First down. Out of bounds. This one to James Townsend. Townsend hadn't caught a pass yet today, so Tate continues to mix it up with a lot of different receivers. We talked about the BCS poll coming out on Monday, and you go back to the series and the history of the BCS. Here's how teams opened up and who the champion ended up being. Now, only twice has a team that was ranked one or two in the preseason poll gone on to be the champion. That means four of the six years. The champion was not ranked number one or number two in the first poll. Of course, Jim Trestle won one. A perfect season of 14 and 0 and a win over Miami. And then when you look back at that BCS, never has a team one and two stayed that way and gone one and two and played each other. Right. That's never happened. Right. Drew Tate has found nine different receivers. I mentioned a minute ago that Townsend with his first catch. So nine different guys, and boy, that's how you have your teammates rally around. You get everybody a little sugar. It's amazing what they have done in the face of adversity and versus Ohio State defense that is pretty doggone good. Yep. And I think before it's all said and done, they're going to have three or four number one draft picks off of this Ohio State defense. Not maybe this year, but in the next two or three years. You know, watching Iowa play today, we mentioned to Kirk Ferentz talking with him yesterday. I said, Coach, I know you never look ahead, but I'm looking ahead on your schedule. I said, let's say you beat Ohio State. They'll be favored in their next two ball games or expected to win their next two ball games. And then they run into a buzzsaw at the end of the season because it's uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota and Purdue, I think, right? All back to back to back. I think they have Purdue, Purdue, Purdue over first, here a couple yeah. years, a couple weeks. So Purdue and Wisconsin playing right now two battles of unbeatens in the Big Ten still scoreless. Is that what the story is. That is still a scoreless tie in West Lafayette. Long handoff Sims with a nice cut back broke a tackle and down to the 20 and all of a sudden 28 showing some flashes out there. Let's get an update on the Missouri Texas game. Here's John in New York. Brad, Missouri's trying to march back in this one. Brad Smith calls his own number here and keeps it for the touchdown. Problem is they missed the point after, so they remain eight down. But Missouri does have the ball and trying to march for a time score. 28-20, Texas with the lead. Well, the Big 12 will see Missouri and Oklahoma State. So it's our gang next week. Bob and Brad, I'm going to throw my two cents in here and talk about the Iowa team. The things that make a difference for them in the face of adversity. I want to give kudos to the offensive line. Yeah. This is two weeks in a row that they've had the same offensive line and and they've held up very well this afternoon. They're playing well as a unit. I think you know they deserve a lot of credit for giving Drew a little more time than he's had in the past. In addition to his crown. That's a great point, Swanee. You're right. They've been shuffling that line a lot due to injuries and now they're back together. That was probably the biggest thing that helped them having the off week. Not only the injuries. But to get those guys out and get some fundamentals back to work, do some work on those types of things, and uh, really get ready. So the off week obviously is paying off for them, 33 to nothing. And a fourth down coming up. And they're going to go for it here, apparently. Field goal unit's not out there. I just don't think Coach Ferris wants to be in the position of getting one block. Saying he's oh. Well, either way, you look like points here. And yeah, piling it on. I don't think he's going to take a knee either. Neither Sims cuts outside, and he'll be run down for a loss. Damian Sims, the ball carrier. So Ohio State will take over on downs. And that's probably a good point. It's his 100th game coaching as a Division One coach, and boy, is it going to be uh, one to celebrate here in about two minutes and 54 seconds. What? Timeout in Iowa City. All Iowa at home looking for their 16th straight home victory. 
We'll take a look at our Dodge defensive playbook, Bob. All right, normally a defensive front will come straight off the ball. They straight in like this. Watch this time. Let me clear this. Watch as the defensive lineman do a little switch. This defensive lineman goes out. This one comes in and see the havoc that it causes with the offensive line. They cross. Now look at this right here. This defensive end gets inside the tackle. He didn't expect that. He gets inside. Now they don't always come off the ball straight ahead. They play some games and they play with in the minds of those offensive linemen. It's almost like cheating. You're supposed to come straight ahead and not go. <laughs> hey, go where I expect you to go. Don't go somewhere else. Yeah. They call that a game or a twist. Troy Smith, high pass, but caught by Ginn. Ginn, great speed. Well, they tackle him or even off to the races down the sideline. Nice job by Andrew Becker. A pickup of 20. Time permitting, don't forget, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report. John Craig and Aaron will have scores and highlights from around the country. Some surprises today, not some not so surprising. Well, this one, I think it's surprising me. Yes, this is a big surprise. Yeah. State trying to avoid the shutouts. Antonio Holmes into the secondary. So the two guys with the most speed, Ginn and Holmes, have back to back catches that get them 37 yards. And they go with a hurry up down to the 36 yard line. Clock stop while they move the chains. Not being shut out would be about the only thing they could salvage probably out of this ball game, but they have to build on something for their next outing. And this is uh, not what you want to build on. Smith, he'll run it. Down the sideline, and he's bumped out of bounds. He's got another first down. Smith, Our Pacific player. Life game summary in this one: the Iowa defense has been sensational. They forced three turnovers. They've only given up 104 yards. Matt Roth has led the way, along with Hodge and Greenway. And it was Drew Tate, Solomon, his favorite man with career highs. Drew Tate ran one in as well as throwing three touchdowns to nine different receivers. It was. Quite a coming out party for Drew Tate against the number 23 team in the country. And Troy Smith lofts one, got him, touchdown. Great throw. Nickel the tight end. But this whole drive was about the last few drives. The ball game was over for Ohio State. It was getting some experience for the younger guys and especially for Troy Smith. 23 yard touchdown pass. And finally, those guys in the Buckeye. Red and silver have something to cheer about, but it hasn't been much. Extra point coming up as it's been a long time since Mike Nugent hasn't had to kick, and he's finally going to kick an extra point here. And just barely got it through somebody's arms there for the extra point up and good. 33 to 7. So Ohio State won't be shut out. Troy Smith has his second touchdown pass of the year. Up in that defensive booth for Iowa. Norm Parker. I Norm Parker's right about where that rail is right there. Oh, where the, where the white, white shirted man is. I think he was sitting there. He may be leaning back, but. Uh, Boy, his, his defense played great today. He, they did. He's had a tough year. Norm lost his son, and uh, then yep. he, had, he was a diabetic and had some problems uh, with. Uh, he missed his first game, he said, in 36 years of coaching uh, earlier this year when uh, he missed the game at Arizona State. And he said at Arizona State after he had the. the uh, foot injury and had the boot on he was in a wheelchair sitting at home said I'd never been home with my wife watching a football game and he said I got so mad at my defense I fell out of the wheelchair and I was laying in front of the TV I had to yell at my wife in the kitchen come and help me I can't get back in the wheelchair couldn't get back in his wheelchair that was great <laughs> onside kick coming here by Nugent takes a high bounce handled beautifully by the good hands team Marcus Pascal the safety took it on a hop and I always got it with just over two minutes remaining in the ball game. So Kirk Ferentz started off his first game as a head coach was with Maine and he was telling us they played Villanova. He said Villanova was a pretty good football team. And he said we got whacked really bad. We got beat really bad. We had a charter flight we were going to pick up and he said the associate athletic director for Maine came up to me after the ball game and said we got a problem. He said no kidding. I know what the scoreboard said. He says no we got a worse problem. We got a plane sitting there but we had got no pilot. First down 
A handoff. No gain on the play. Backup quarterback in, backup everybody in for Iowa. He said, uh, we got a problem, there's no pilot. He said, where'd the pilot go? And he said, well, Classic Airlines or whatever it was called at the time does a lot of junket flights to Atlantic City. We think the pilot went gambling. We don't know if he won or lost, but he's not here. <laughs> they had to get a pilot come in from Florida all the way up to fly their charter flight. In the meantime, they had no money. One of the priests at Maine came up with 600 bucks. I don't know if he took it out of the collection barrel or not. But they got $600 so they could take the team to McDonald's. Yeah, to go get something to eat. They waited seven hours to finally fly back to Maine. He said, I walked in to my own home at 7.30 in the morning, and my wife said, you sure you still want to be a head coach? <laughs> and I said, well, 100 games later, I bet you're pretty happy you had to go through that. And yeah. he said, 100 games and what I had to go through, and uh, you remember your beginnings, but he's going to remember number 100. And I tell you oh, what, yeah. uh, his team will give him a game ball for this one. He, he, he is one of the outstanding coaches, not only in this league, but in college, all of college football. Some of the uh, pro teams have been after him in yep. the past. And, uh, you know, I think the Big Ten has has a lot of quality. No doubt. Really good football coaches now. And the man on the other side, Jim Trestle, right well, there. Kirk just got a, a bucket full, so that was what I was talking about. His his players love him, and so does the administration and the fans around here. And uh, this is a big, big win, 33 to seven. And we're down to the final couple of plays here. And inside the 40, down to the 38 is Sims again tonight on ABC. Speaking of anniversaries, the 50th anniversary season of the wonderful world of Disney starts at 8, 7 central with a world premiere movie, Growing Pains, The Return of the Seavers. Featuring Kirk Cameron, Tracy Gold, Alan Thicke, the whole crew from Growing Pains is back. Then at 10, 9 central, an encore presentation of Sunday's episode of Desperate Housewives, the season's highest rated news show. It's all tonight on ABC. There's going to be a party in Iowa City tonight for the first time in a long, long time. They have beaten the Ohio State Buckeyes on their home field. 33 to 7 is the final. Our Chevrolet players of the game in this one today. I don't think there's any doubt about who that one was going to be. Drew Tate, three touchdowns in the air, one on the ground. A.J. Hawk, again, was in double figures and tackles for the Ohio State Buckeyes. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. What a show Drew Tate put on for the home team today. The making of a star at quarterback. He may not be the biggest in the world, but his arm's pretty big, and his heart's about the size of Texas, which is where he came from. Jim Trestle's never lost three in a row, and Ohio State loses their first three in Big Ten Conference play for the first time in 16 years. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Don't forget Monday, 9 Eastern, it's the Buccaneers led by Brian Greasy against the St. Louis Rams on ABC's Monday Night Football. Right now for Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan and our ABC crew, Brad Nessler from Iowa City saying so long. Our final score, Iowa 33, Ohio State 7. This is a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. Sunday. The secrets get juicier. Who's that? And no one can stop gossiping. We're seeing a marriage counselor. About the number one show worth watching. I can walk down the street and hold my head high. TV's juiciest oh. must-see guilty pleasure. Ah! Susan? So how are you? An all-new Desperate Housewives, Sunday 9, 8 Central. Plus an encore of last week's episode tonight, 10, 9 Central, only on ABC. John Kerry and liberals in Congress have a health care plan for you. A big government takeover. $1.5 trillion. Rationing, less access, fewer choices, long waits. And Washington bureaucrats, not your doctor, make final decisions on your health. So if you need treatment, all you have to do is... You get the picture. John Kerry and liberals in Congress. Big government run health care. I'm George W. Bush, and I approve this message. My chicken sandwich is in there. It's the new one from Tim Hortons. You know, with the roasted red peppers. Nothing else has the taste of Tim Hortons' new chicken and roasted red pepper sandwich, prepared hot and fresh with our roasted red pepper sauce on a toasted multigrain bun in a combo just $4.79. Thanks, man. I'll pull you out if you give me half. Fact. Chevy has the most complete line of crew cabs on the road. 
period. Get the right deal on the right crew cab right now during the Chevy Right Truck event. Stop into your Chevy dealer and get 3,500 total cash back on an 04 Colorado crew cab with GMAC financing. Hurry, the Chevy Right Truck event ends November 1st. See your Central Ohio Chevy dealer today. Yo, fam. 